following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are The game day ride. The time to reflect. To look back at how we arrived at this moment. What brought us here? The sweat and the sacrifice. Big chest, big chest. Pressure. Devotion. Brotherhood. Uh, like victory. victory. We earned this. We are resilient and strong. When others collapsed under the weight of expectation, we kept grinding. Together, working to seize this one opportunity to be champions. An incredible achievement. They will remember this forever. This ride and our journey is ending. Ahead, a shining final destination. We have arrived. It wasn't easy. You have a tremendous opportunity right in front of you. But nothing worth doing ever is. To go win a state championship. When we wake up tomorrow. What will we have earned? This is right out of a scene from childhood dreams across Texas. Entering AT&T Stadium in Arlington and hoping at the end of the day and at the end of a grueling season that you can call yourself a champion. Entering with a dream to win not just one state championship, but back-to-back, -back, La Vega has that in its sights. And for Carthage, entering with dreams of etching your name and this team on the wall of what is already more than a decade-long dynasty. In Class 4A Division I, this title matchup is a dream come true. The two teams that have combined for the last four championships, the Carthage Bulldogs and the La Vega Pirates, as we begin Day 3 of the UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest. And we are so glad to have you along. Ted Emmerich along with former Texas A&M receiver Shea Walker. Six state championship games down, six more to go over the next two days. And this game carries as much buzz as any. Shea, let's start with Carthage and an offense that has plenty of firepower. Well, you talk about the offense. They've been unstoppable all season, led by Kai Horton, the junior quarterback, a 6'4", 220-pounder, very athletic guy. Mason Courtney, head coach Scott Surratt, said Mason Courtney sets the tone for this team every single week. And then Kilvantre Dixon is an outstanding, dynamic, big-time playmaking wide receiver. Last week in the semifinal games, he had a miracle game and just really propelled his team to a victory there. He's making catches downfield, so athletic. One-on-one -on -one matchups with him. If you try to cover him with one guy, it's not enough. He will beat one-on-one -on -one coverage every time. And you see his prowess in the receiving game. He's also got a little bit of hops in the run game, getting the ball across the end zone there. And just because you can catch right there to show off a little bit, but what a great job he is, and he's going to be a talent that they have to deal with from the La Vega side. But this Carthage offense has to contend with a La Vega defense that ranks as one of the best in the state annually. Well, Don Hyde, second-year head coach, is a former defensive coordinator at La Vega, and he preaches defense. And you see a Pirates life for me. You see the, the scant numbers that they have allowed other teams to do offensively. And they've just got this dynamic duo of Detravion Thompson and Rayshon Roberts who were wreaking havoc in the backfield. They get penetration. They fought off double teams. They cover wide receivers. These two guys are going to be key today for the Pirates to be successful in this championship game. La Vega won the title in 2015 and last year. Carthage won in 2016 and 17. Who takes the crown today? Here in Arlington, the home of the Dallas Cowboys, Carthage and La Vega, ready to do battle in the 4A Division I state championship game. Before kick, let's go inside the locker rooms.
You know they're going to make plays. We're going to make plays. When it's all said and done, you got to make more plays than they make. That's called football. Any questions? I love you. I'm proud of you. Regardless of the outcome, I'm proud of you. And I'm extremely proud to be your head coach. You understand me? Yes, sir. Love you to death. You got me? Love you. La Vega and Coach Don Hyde going for the program's third state championship in the last five years. And, of course, back-to-back -back after beating Liberty Hill a year ago before kickoff. Downstairs to Jason Spells, who is with Coach Don Hyde. Coach Hyde, I know it's former defensive coordinator. That side of the ball holds a special place in your heart. You began this season with eight fresh faces starting on defense. What do you tell them now as they start on this stage for the first time? Oh, just how proud we are of them and how they've grown up throughout the year and, you know, come out here and do what we do, which is play hard, fast, and physical. I know physical is a brand of football you enjoy to play. Good luck in this game. We'll now send it to our Katie Ingleson, who is standing by with Carthage head coach Scott Surratt. Coach Surratt, this is some familiar territory for you. First time back in the state title game, though, since 2017. What emotions are evoked for you as you get ready to take the field here? Well, we're very emotional. It feels like a long time since 2017, since we've been here. We're very proud to be here. Uh, very emotional times for the seniors. Uh, my daughter's a senior in this group, so... It, uh, we just hope to put up a good performance. Coach, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Best of luck. Scott Surratt, 6-0 and oh with Carthage in state championship games, including that victory a couple of years ago against Kennedale here at AT&T Stadium. Carthage winning the coin toss. They want the ball, so La Vega will kick. Ian Chavez sends it away. Short kick. Fair catch called for. In the 35 and Carthage will have good field position. This explosive offense will get the first crack at it. Kai Horton, the first year starter at quarterback, an unknown commodity before the season, Shay, and he was named honorable mention all state this week. Well, it's just been a fantastic junior season for him, and he's filling the shoes of Gunner Caps, who did everything for this Carthage offense over the last couple of seasons. But Kai Horton, I mean, he's, he's got the big arm, big frame, see the numbers there and it's just it's hard to argue that he could have done anything differently to improve this offense out of the shotgun to begin Horton taking a shot looking for Kel Williams and he brings it in full extension from Williams 35 yards on the first play from scrimmage and the Bulldog offense quick to get down the field Huddling up really quickly right now, and what a dynamic play to start off this game. Kale Williams, a big-time receiver. We talked about Cabell Colvante Dixon in the open, but Kale Williams also a big threat downfield, averaging over 18 yards a catch and 10 touchdowns on the season. Dixon now goes in motion into the backfield, number three in the red for Carthage. Mason Courtney, the 1,400-yard rusher, his first carry. Picks up three yards. Back to Williams for a second, Shay. This is the guy that Scott Surratt told us this week could have a big game today. He expected a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities with so much focus on Dixon. Well, and you saw the speed that the senior wide receiver had. He got behind the secondary, had a step and a half, and was able to come up with a huge catch on first down. Second and seven. Empty set for Horton. Dixon, again, the motion man. Flag is down underneath. Dixon has the first down, and a second flag is thrown. There's flags all over the field. So a lot to sort out for Bill Theodore, our referee, and his crew. While we're waiting on the call here, we have seen Colvante Dixon go in motion on the first three plays of this game. And really, that's what they're going to do to try to find out how is this La Vega defense covering him? Are they going to run a man with him? Are they going to bring a bracket package over to get him? And, and it's, it's a good idea to get him moving to find out what the secondary in the back seven is going to do. There are two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Illegal shift, number three, was never set prior to the snap. 
Also, an illegal block in the back, number 11, on the offense. The block in the back foul has declined. The illegal shift foul take place from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. I, I love Scott Surratt's reaction to the, the second penalty that was called on Montrell Smith. But here is the illegal shift. Dixon never said. Yes. But I like the fact that they're moving him. This Carthage offense is moving Dixon around to make sure. And again, it's just, it gives you an idea of what the secondary is going to do and who is going to be into coverage and where your one-on-one -on -one matchups are, i.e. Kel Williams' first play of the game. Carthage is coming off its closest game of the season. 49-42 win in the semis against Lampasas. Second and 12. Courtney up the middle. And driving ahead inside the 20. There's a reason Scott Surratt calls him the tone setter. It's a first down. Now you see that physical run. Mason Courtney's over 1,400 yards on the season. Oh, and that ball might be out. Yeah, La Vega the... thought they had recovered a fumble there. The officials ruled Courtney down. And remember, we do have instant replay here. Of course, it has to be initiated from upstairs. Instant replay for the second straight year in the UIL Football State Championships. Don Hyde and his staff are pointing upstairs, but no signal until right now. The runner was ruled down on the field. The previous play is under review. Jordan Rogers was the man who ripped it out of the hands of Courtney, and the officials will take a closer look. Well, as Mason Courtney was fighting for extra yards, you see number 20 right there. He's got both of his hands and arms on the ball, and that ball is out. And if look at all the five or six pirate defenders around Mason Courtney. Rogers. Considered the leader of the defense, Shea. His brother, Jared, the defensive MVP in the state championship game for La Vega a year ago. Well, and Jordan Rogers had a forced fumble and a pick six in the semifinal game last weekend and kind of picking up on this first drive for Carthage right where he left off. As a whole, La Vega had six takeaways in their semifinal win over Springtown. What do you think of replay being in this round of well, the state championships? Yeah, I like it. And it's been used a handful of times in the last day or two of, of championship yep. games. And, and and it's good because there's there unique clarity on some of these plays. And I think that the replay uh, feature is certainly something that is needed in these games. You want to get it right. Absolutely. Right, and that's what most coaches will tell you now. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about can you really apply that the whole season and of course the cost to install that kind of equipment in every stadium that's a question for another day but in this round when a championship is decided it's wonderful to have that included now and again we have college replay officials right for these games all 12 this week at AT&T Stadium they are communicating with referee Bill Theodore as he takes a look in the viewfinder. And, and, and a lot of people say, look, we already saw that was a clear strip. The ball was right. on the ground, recovered by La Vega. But the officials have to get the clock right. right. They have to yep. get the yardage right. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of, that goes into it other than just the actual yeah, Who ball. has the ball? Yes. Right. Well, La Vega's side celebrating. Well, and... And, and I believe you, that's the clear indication. We'll get the official call right now. But and you got Carthage. After further review, the point rolling on the field is reversed. The ball came out prior to the runner being tackled. La Vegas ball, first down and ten. Clock operator, please set the game clock to ten minutes, six seconds. Ten oh six. So six takeaways last week in the semifinals, and a takeaway. Here in the first two minutes of the state championship game for the Pirates defense. And Ted, I was going to say before the official made the call is that you saw the Carthage defense coming out on the field. So they, they knew as well as soon as the official stepped back away from the replay camera. Landry Kinney at quarterback for La Vega. Here's Elisha Cummings, the Pirates leading rusher. 
out across the 35. 18 yards for Cummings on his first carry. Now Andrew Kenny fields the snap, puts it in the belly, right side of that offensive line. Damian Brown and Andrew Brown creating a good seam. And how about the open field moves there by Elijah Cummings? Average at nine yards a carry so far this season. Cummings and Jarquay Walton, both more than 1,300 yards rushing this year. They are right next to Kinney in the gun. Saw Dravion to great in motion. Cummings again, straight ahead. And carrying Mason Bobo with him across the 40. Ford impact players. I mentioned Landry Kinney in his first year as the starting quarterback for La Vega. Last year when the Pirates won the state title, Ara Rawls III was the guy. Kinney has taken over. Rawls has moved to safety. Jarquay Walton's first carry. Maybe a yard. Kylan Lister on the tackle for Carthage. And the Bulldogs' leading tackler, Rayvon Ingram, their middle linebacker, the other Ford Impact player. Well, certainly Ingram, a three years, 13 tackles for loss on the season. The senior linebacker has done it all for this Bulldogs program during his high school career. Named second team All State this week by the Associated Press for the second straight year. Carthage's defense allows just under 13 points a game. Third and three now for La Vega. Cummings denied initially and denied again. Bobo and Cole Whitlock bring him down. It's a loss of four. Wow, Desmond Hicks, number 84, is going to get through here as well, Ted. Fighting off the block and then the two defenders cleaning up behind him. This Carthage defense. Loaded for Bear on that play. Got through the line of scrimmage quick. Deep penetration. Linebackers cleaned it up. Jordan Rogers, in addition to being a star linebacker, punts for La Vega. Craig McNew, the return man for Carthage. Bear catch. At the 25, a 35-yard punt by Rogers, And we've got a timeout. Carthage and Kai Horton back to work. Today on Fox Sports Southwest Plus, the battle to be best in Texas continues as teams across the state collide inside AT&T Stadium. Don't miss today's matchups during the UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest Plus. When it's game day in Texas, we don't mess around. Because on any given night, amazing is found. And the Rangers have won Nothing beats game day on Fox Sports Southwest. High School Scoreboard Live on Fox Sports Southwest. The UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest are brought to you by your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By Jack in the Box, proud sponsor of the Texas UIL Championships. By Polaris Ranger, driven to do more. By Baylor Scott and White Health, changing health care for the better. By Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud official sponsor of the UIL. And by Main Event, the most fun you can have under one roof. Main Event Entertainment, together we play. Uh, we look forward to this week all year, and many people have looked forward to this game all year in 4A Division I. They hoped that it would come to pass, and here it is. Carthage and La Vega have combined for the last four state championships in 4A Division I. Carthage's offense back on the field. They fumbled in La Vega territory on their first drive. Mason Courtney had it knocked out of his hands by Jordan Rogers. And Kai Horton and company will start at their own 25 this time. Kel Williams had the big catch on the first drive in motion. Off the play fake. Horton stepping up. Wants Williams again on the comeback. Incomplete. Jesse Major Sterling, the sophomore corner, in coverage for La Vega. 
We see the Carthage offense. This offensive line, Shea, is massive for the 4A level, averaging 308 pounds across the front, like Tykeest Crawford, one of the best offensive tackles in the nation at the high school level. And impact players just about at every skill position. They talk about that. The baby of the group in that offensive line is Connor Davis at six foot and only 235 pounds. Only. Eight, off the cutback. He has a first down across the 35. You see why he is so dangerous. Mason Courtney, not only does he have the elusiveness to bounce it outside, take another look. He's going to lower the shoulder to finish the run, and he's going to pick up an extra two or three yards. I mean, he senses where the defensive the players are coming after him. He lowers the shoulder, lays it right into the chest of the oncoming tackler and then picks up another three or four yards after that. 12 total on the carry for Courtney. Swing it out. Cavante Brown Hoskins, who has worked his way into the offense here in the playoffs. Junior gaining five yards there. Anthony Burns on the stop. Talk about that big offensive line. You see the athleticism of Takis Crawford, 6'6", 336 pounds, excuse me. Floats out, gets in the open space, doesn't really knock anybody off their pins, but he's out there and provides a little bit of a screen, and Brown Haskins was able to pick up some yards. Second and five. Screen, Dixon. Oh, takes a shot. Jordan Rogers was waiting. It's a loss of two. Don Hyde was talking about Jordan Rogers on the phone, and he was telling us that this guy is unbelievably talented in the open field. And you see, that is a picture-perfect form tackle against one of the most dynamic playmakers in all of 4A. Dixon, honorable mention, All-State the last two years, back-to-back 1,100-yard -back seasons. Now third and seven for the Bulldogs. Horton airs it out over the head of Craig McNew. Incomplete. It's fourth down. That was Aaron Rawls on the coverage. Talked about him being the quarterback last year as a sophomore led this La Vega Pirates team to a state championship and now quarterbacking the defense. Yeah, Don Hyde said it this week. It was a difficult decision to begin the season. As a sophomore, he wins a state title as the quarterback. Tight competition with Kinney back in August. But Hyde said, I'm a defensive guy. I didn't have a leader in the secondary. I needed a Rawls on that side of the ball. Well, and Rawls being a coach's son, certainly able to carry the mantle. More than seven. Quick kick from Horton. This is the look that Carthage shows often when they look to punt. On the return, D'Amico Chambliss. And Chambliss with a little room, takes it out, close to the 45, a 20-yard return. We are scoreless in the first quarter. Carthage and La Vega. No score, first quarter, Ted Emmerich, Shea Walker, Jason Spells, Katie Engelson, our entire crew. Hey, don't miss a minute of the UIL football championship coverage this week. You can watch the games wherever you go on Fox Sports Go. Download the app. Enter your TV provider information. You can live stream on your phone or tablet. I was locked into this yesterday. You and Mark Followell on the call. The first two games of the triple header header yesterday. Yes, and two great games. Two first-time opponents in the state championship. And both of those teams, neither one of them won. But both of them played extremely well. Hamlin and the Pied Pipers, great job against the Mark. And how about Mark, Kevin Hoffman, and those yeah, guys? No kidding. Three in a row. Here it's La Vega and Carthage. La Vega going for back-to-back -back in 4A Division I. Carthage going for their third title in four years. Pirates start at their own 45. Jarquay Walton searching for daylight. Falls forward. Quentin Owens wraps him up after a gain of three. Take a look at the La Vega starting offense. By the way, this offensive line is pretty big itself, averaging 272 pounds. Allen, Reggie Brown, and Damian Brown, all returning starters. Walton and Cummings are 1,300-yard rushers. Malachi Wright, the receiver, offensive MVP in the state championship game a year ago. He scored twice. Second and seven, Kenny on the move. 
And behind his target, Walton. A nice pressure there by the linebacker, Mason Bobo, who scraped off the edge and took a beeline right at Landry Kinney. Kinney almost had to, like a sidearm throw to get it out. Brings up third down for the Pirates. Landry Kinney, like his counterpart today, Kai Horton from Carthage, named honorable mention All-State this week. Doesn't have the gaudy numbers, but he protects the ball, and he makes plays when it counts. Can he do it here on third and seven? Kinney on a line. That's caught. Malachi Wright breaks a tackle. Inside the 30. Mason Bobo makes the stop. 26 yards on third and long. But Malachi Wright doing a great job of getting open against man coverage. And the throw by Kenny, he anticipated the cut by Malachi Wright. As soon as he made that foot, the ball was in the air and on the line. Big play on third down. Yeah, Wright last year against Liberty Hill had touchdowns of 90 and 61 yards in all three catches, 163 in those two scores on his way to offensive MVP honors. First down, right back to right. And pushing across the 20. DeAndre Bowman in coverage. A seven-yard pickup this time. Well, head coach Scott Surratt said DeAndre Bowman is our man on an island, our island guy. Shut down corner. You can see giving a little bit of room there to Malachi right after he made the big play. Good job defensively of limiting the run after catch. Now, Surratt told us he is going to travel Bowman with the right all day long. That is going to be one of the toughest assignments of the year for the senior corner, Bowman. Second and three. Walton. And knocked down after a gain of two. It'll be third and short. Jai Brazier on the tackle. Frazier doing a good job coming off that linebacker spot. Had a blocker on him. From the offensive lineman for La Vega, but able to get underneath and force a third down. Now, Landry Kenny lined up. This is Jordan Rogers in the Wildcat. Star linebacker, also a punter, Wildcat quarterback. He has the first down inside the 15. Given three yards. This is a new wrinkle for La Vega late in the season. We talk about a physical run. It wasn't there at the beginning. He had some of his own blockers being backed up into him, but never quit. Kept the legs churning. Shoulders downfield. Good job of protecting the football when he got into the body. The mass of all those red jerseys ripping at the ball. Rodgers had three short yardage touchdowns in the quarterfinal win against Argyle, which was the number one team in the state. Kinney back at quarterback. Flag is down, makes a man miss. And scrambles out of bounds. But check that flag. Jai Berger had, Berger had Landry Kinney dead to rights. And how about the big athletic quarterback, the spin move? He did a 360 on him was able to get out of bounds. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Well, you might recognize that last name, Kenny, if uh, you're a longtime fan of Texas high school football. His dad, Gary Joe, is on the staff under Don Hyde, former head coach at Canton and Sherman High School, of course, all Southwest linebacker at Baylor in the late 80s. Landry's brother, G.J., was a star in high school at Canton and Gilmer, bef Gilmer, excuse me, before playing his college ball at Tulsa, put up lots of numbers with the Golden Hurricane. And G.J. is now with the Philadelphia Eagles as an offensive special projects assistant. First and 15. Elisha Cummings in the clear. Touchdown, La Vega. 19 yards. The Pirates strike first. A 
The left side of the offensive line, Robert Brown, Reggie Brown, center James, they did a great job of slide stepping, creating a space. And Jarquay Walton sealed off the outside pursuit, which allowed Elijah Cummings that running lane, and he takes advantage of it. Great blocking at the point of attack. And Jarquay Walton, he knew it. He's a touchdown. Ian Chavez tacks on the extra point. Elisha Cummings with his 23rd rushing touchdown of the season for La Vega. Now that hole opened up quickly, didn't it? Well, it really did. And you said that. We talked about the offensive line for La Vega doing a good job sealing off the inside. Walton sealed off the outside in a perfect running lane for Elijah Cummins to score his 23rd touchdown on the season. Remember the relatively short field after the return by Chambliss. Jack in the box scoring drive. Seven plays, 55 yards, 252 off the clock. And Cummings in from 19 yards out. La Vega grabbing the lead here late in the first quarter. Scott Surratt and his offense losing a fumble on their first possession. Had to punt the second. And they'll have it back as they try to decipher this La Vega defense. Well, let's check out the Fox map. Wondering, okay, where does La Vega come from? Punch it in. Here you go. Just north of Waco, technically in Bell Mead, McLennan County. Population just over 10,000. This is their fifth state title game appearance. And of course, they won it all last year, won it all in 2015 as well. They are going for their third in five years. And how about that? Arthur Rhodes winning World Series in 2011 with the Cardinals. Their road here to AT&T Stadium. By far the closest call, third round against Melissa. They won with a field goal at the gun, 45-42. And a lot of the team was out with the flu that week. Talk about surviving and advancing. Brown Hoskins on the return for Carthage. Takes it to the 45. A 16-yard return. Yeah, Ted, I'm not so sure that that the La Vega Pirate kick coverage team was thinking. They thought he was going to wave for a fair catch like yep. he did on the opening kickoff. But that wasn't the case, and that's going to be great starting field position for this high-powered Carthage offense. Bulldogs moved it on that first drive, Shea. Then Mason Courtney had it ripped out of his hands by Jordan Rogers, losing that fumble. And then the punt on their second possession. But they'll start this drive at their own 46. Dixon in motion, jet sweep. Calvante Dixon to midfield. Gain of four. Rayshon Roberts on the tackle. I'm trying to find ways to get the ball into Dixon's hands. Again, we talked about him in the open, a dynamic playmaking receiver and a guy who can change the field on you in a heartbeat. Didn't look like much, and it's a five-yard, four-and-a-half-yard, five-yard pickup on first down. That's the creativity of the Carthage offense. They will move Dixon around, hand it to him, of course, throw it to him. All kinds of formations Carthage is going to throw at you. Low throw from Horton, and wide of Dixon, incomplete. Yeah, a little bit quick on the release from Kai Horton. Initially turns to his left to get the linebackers to take a step to the left and he wheels back to the right trying to find Dixon and he just held on the ball a little too long and not very accurate with that pass and Dixon not able to make a play. Third and six. Free play here. Braden Wade brings it in. And he's across the 25. 25 yards from Kai Horton to the sophomore Braden Wade. And that should stand. Looked like the Travion Thompson jumped early for La Vega. Offsides on the defense, number 97. That penalty is declined, resulting in a first down. Yeah, forget five yards. We'll take sure. 25. Absolutely. Braden Wade. Just another weapon in this Bulldog offense. 
25 catches on the season, four touchdowns, working the boundary beautifully in between two defenders. And Kai Harton right on the money with that pass. Wade, the one sophomore, sees a lot of time at receiver for Carthage. Now at the Pirate 25. Horton to a sliding Dixon. Gain of six. Now, Calvante Dixon was battling a knee injury from the first round. He's back to 100% now. Well, coming out of the break does a great job of locating the ball. Kind of an easy pitch and catch when you have the wide side of the field and you have a dynamic playmaker like Dixon. Hard to know if he's going in or out when he makes the out cut. Ball's on the money. It's an easy pitch and catch. Now it's Courtney slamming it up the middle. Close to the 10. Gain of seven and a first down. Javon Eigelhart brings him down. Talk about all the different looks that Car Carthage is going to throw at you, Shay. Don Hyde told us preparation just wore on him and his staff this week. They charted all the formations from Carthage. They printed it out. It was 14 pages long. <laughs> That's a little bit of creativity, and you here's another it. one. Yeah, under center. Power eye, two men motion, and give it to the first man through Jaden Thomas. And the senior works it to the five-yard line. Eigelhart again on the tackle. Yeah, Scott Surratt does a great job offensively. I mean, he's he's just continues to grow his offense, and he tailors it to his playmakers, making sure they get it. And it all starts up front. He's got a fantastic, you mentioned a massive offensive line for this Carthage Bulldog team. They've got that, and they're knocking on the door. Carthage ever so close to its first points of the game. We are at the end of the first quarter. La Vega and Carthage try to settle the score, combining for the last four state championships in Class 4A Division I. After one, Pirates up 7-0. between La Vega and Carthage. And for the first time, they play for a state championship here in 4A Division I. La Vega, seven, Carthage, nothing. As we start the second quarter, Ted Emmerich, Shea Walker, Jason Spells, Katie Engelson, our entire crew in Carthage has it at the five of La Vega to open the quarter. We check out the first quarter stats. Pretty even thus far. Carthage getting it moving on this possession, but the one turnover sticks out. Mason Courtney losing a fumble on the first drive of the game. Well, and Dixon so far receiving wise only four yards in the first quarter. Kai Horton under center. Second and three from the five. Mason Courtney pounds it in for six. What an opening. That offensive line absolutely getting downfield, blocking first level, second level. Not a white jersey near Mason Courtney as he takes that in from the five-yard line to tie the game. Well, potentially tie the game. There we go. Yeah, you can say it. There you have it. Brennan Phillips with the extra point. Seven all, four seconds into the second quarter. Mason Courtney with his 16th rushing touchdown of the year. And Scott Surrett could not emphasize it enough this week when we talked with him. It's not just setting the tone for the offense, what Courtney does. He sets the tone with his physical running style for the entire team. Well, it's that too, Ted, but if you think about from a leadership standpoint, you have a junior that's with a, a senior-laden team and he is the leader, though. He, he sets the tone. And again, you said it, offensively and defensively. Coach Surratt said, he's the guy. They follow his cue. And I, you just have a little bit of a sense that, you know, he 
the ball got stripped away from him. He had five or six guys on him and around him, bringing him down. Still not an excuse for him to lose the football in his mind. However, he would certainly, you see the emphatic finish on that drive, and I, you have to believe that's something that say, all right, let's settle down and, and play Carthage Bulldog football. Toronto sends it away. Fair catch. By Jay Brian Boyer. Down to the Carthage sideline, Katie. Well, these Carthage Bulldogs are playing for more than a state title. They're playing for Coach Mack, a longtime assistant on this Carthage coaching staff, who epitomizes what it means to be a Carthage Bulldog. In October, unfortunately, his journey battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma came to an end. His fight, though, inspiring so many. Coach Mack was Coach Surratt's offensive coordinator and coached him in high school. These players have dedicated this season to him. They wear bracelets that read playing for Coach Mack and have decals on their helmets. He was a coach at Carthage for over 30 years and made an impact on everyone he met. Now, every time these players and coaches take the field, they're playing for him. Coach Surratt said that in last week's state semifinal game, a game in which they won with seconds on the clock, Coach Mack had something to do with that finish, guys. Yeah, Dixon caught the game-winning touchdown pass with 13 seconds to go, and it's like Coach Mack was smiling down on them. On the receiving team, number 32, penalty is half the distance from the end of the kick. First down. Uh, had a penalty on La Vega on the return. It's a fair catch, but still a flag and a personal foul. So the Pirates are backed up. And to finish up, Dennis McLaughlin passed away in October. And Scott Surratt said he was the one guy that I kept from the previous regime. Coach Mack coached Surratt when he was at Lyndon Kildare High School years ago. A special relationship. From the 12, Kenny is buried. Ray Von Ingram. Now look at the first two possessions for La Vega. They punched it in a moment ago with Elisha Cummings. They punted on their first drive. La Vega averaging 272 yards rushing as a team going up against a Carthage defense that allows just 94 per game. Second and 12, Kenny pulls it. The catch is made. Manny Ruiz brings it in. Javon King made the tackle, about 10 yards. Yeah, Ruiz, inside receiver. Just a little sprint out. Good throw by Kenny. He's going to take a shot when he catches the football, but good job of hanging Jayon King on the tackle. A negative play on first down, though, that helped a lot on that play by Ruiz's catch on the sideline. Make it to more manageable third down. Three yards needed. Kenny on the keeper. First down and more. He lunges close to the 30. Nine-yard pickup for the quarterback. All right, Ted, so Kenny was dead to rights. He made four red jerseys miss, four defenders. Take another look. Both linebacker defensive in there, shakes another one, picks up the first down, smart enough to get down and not take a bigger shot, but that was a very athletic play and a big conversion for this La Vega offense on third down. Yeah, you make Rayvon Ingram miss on the hole, that's impressive. You, you bet. Number six in the red. Play fake for Kenny. And again to Ruiz along the sideline, out to the 40, gain of 11, and another first down. King had the assignment for Carthage. Yeah, how about the footwork there by Manuel Ruiz? Great job. Catches the ball. He's going to drag the toe. All you need is one. Yeah, heady play. College and high school level. Couple of catches on this drive now for Reeves. From the 40. Kinney again on the keeper. Trying to circle up Quentin Owens. Flag is down. How about the speed of Quentin Owens running down Landry Kinney? 
the defensive end. He flashed out in the beginning and was able to chase him down. And Kenny eh, gets up a little, little nicked up. Holding on the offense, number seven. Ten yard penalty remains first down. That's on Saltravion de Great. That's a lot to ask from the wide receiver having to hold a block for that long because he's way out there on the edge and as Landry Kenny was coming around you see he's got a handful of jersey right there on the one good call by the officiating crew but again the, the hustle by Quentin Owens yeah to run Kenny down now, Owens committed to Sam Houston State but as Scott Surratt told us this week hey there's a lot of FBS interest in Owens and he did not sign on signing day this week First and 20 after the penalty. Walton stepping out of a tackle down the sidelines. Jarquay Walton inside the 20. Tracked down by Mason Bobo. 50 yards for Jarquay Walton. We talk about him alternating in with Elijah Cummings and Walton last year ran for over 1,600 yards as a running back for this team. The top end speed, fantastic. Got out on the edge. Now it's Cummings, their other 1,300-yard rusher this season. Reversing field, breaking a tackle. Cummings is in. Touchdown, La Vega. His second of the half. I'm sure there's a way, but it is awfully difficult. And, and defensive coordinator Darren Preston for the Carthage Bulldogs has got to be asking himself the same question. We had our guys in position. We had our arms around the running back. We just didn't finish the tackle. Arm tackles will not bring Elijah Cummings down. And he reverses field all the way back the other side and takes it into the end zone. Ian Chavez with the extra point. And it's a 14 to seven lead for La Vega. Elisha Cummings is listed at 5'7", 170. Hard to bring down as Carthage. Two touchdowns in this first half. Saturday on Fox Sports Southwest. High school teams from across the state rally inside AT&T Stadium. All battling to be the best in Texas. Don't miss Saturday's matchups during the UIL Football State Championship on Fox Sports Southwest. Puck is dropped and we're underway. Going to keep it for the end zone. School sports under the spotlight Sunday on Fox Sports Southwest. La Vega reclaims the lead with Elisha Cummings, second touchdown of the first half, 14 to seven over Carthage in the 4A Division One title game. And to take another look here at Quentin Owens, he goes for the football right there. He's not getting his arms around the running back. And Jarquay Walton turns and reverses field. Comes up and then runs out of the arms of Mason Bobo and then gets it into the end zone. It's a heck of a run there by Jarquay Walton. Cummings uh, with the Elijah touchdown. Cummins, excuse but me. Walton had the 50-yard run earlier yes. on the drive as we take a look well, at the I, scoring summary. I mix these two guys up because both of them were running backs yeah. last year. And over 1,000 yards for Elijah Cummings in 2018. 1,300 yards this season. Walton, very similar numbers. Yep. Two, two yards separated Walton and Cummings coming into the day. Exactly. And you think about that and the weapons, and then you go back to the discipline of head coach Don Hyde, and you start talking, I have to put my playmakers in the best spots possible. Another reason why you say Ava Rawls is playing back there in the secondary, leading the defense from that position versus being on the offensive side. Fair catch for Carthage. And Cavante Brown Hoskins. Down to the La Vega sideline, Jason Spells. 
So La Vega is their defense is led by Marquise Hayes, number 10, one of the top linebackers committed to Kansas State earlier this week, but he is not in this game because he broke his foot in last week's win over Springtown. I spoke with head coach Don Hyde before this game about the loss of Hayes. He said, there's no way around it. This kid was a big time player for us, made a lot of big time plays. The defense for La Vega without one of their stars, but as you can see, number 10 still supporting his team. He's on the sideline, jersey still on, cheering on his Pirates. Jason, thank you. Courtney on the carry on first down, picking up four yards. Jamarquise Hayes, named honorable mention All-State this week. He was on crutches Wednesday as he signed his letter of intent with K-State. In fact, he is graduating early, and he will enroll next month in Manhattan. And how happy do you think head coach Chris Kleinman is is to have somebody like Jamarquise Hayes because yeah. he's trying to rebuild that K-State program. I could play a little linebacker, safety. He's going to be quite the piece for climbing in the Big 12. Second and six. Out to Dixon in space. And into La Vega territory. Knocked out at the 45 by Jesse Major Sterling. Now Dixon nodding his head, starting to get rolling. 17 yards here. Just get the little bubble screen right down the sideline, and he's got so much top end speed and athleticism. Runs away from guys. Guy qualified in four different events, the state track meet earlier this year. Dixon on the outside, Courtney inside, tripped up. Three yards. It's Jordan Rogers there defensively. Well, the shoestring tackle by Jordan Rogers. Otherwise, Mason Courtney had plenty of grass to run to. A lot of room to run on that play. And that effort, extra effort there by Jordan Rogers to bring him down. And he just able to swipe him at the feet and trip him up. Carthage balanced as always. This is what they do year after year. Got the big numbers through the air, big numbers on the ground, and Scott Zarat said it is so key that we establish that ground game against La Vega. We can't be one-dimensional. Swing it out, Brown Hoskins. And knocked down after a gain of a yard. Deontay Robinson and Vernon Walker were there for La Vega. Both defensive tackles. Carthage Bulldogs started off this game with a deep pass downfield to Kale Williams for 35 yards. Since then, we've not seen him really throw the ball downfield. It's mostly in the bubble screen and around the line of scrimmage tosses. You just feel like you're defensively, you, you, you have to be patient and you can't come up and cover too much because if you do, these receivers will get behind you. Williams, a burner. David Dixon, a burner. Brandon Wade also can get behind you. So this carpet offense, very difficult to defend. Third and six. Horton. Finds Calvante Dixon, and he has the first down across the 35. Again matched up with the sophomore Jesse Major Sterling. Dixon picking up eight. Both quarterbacks in this game have shown to have big arms. This is a long throw from Kai Horton. He knows it's third down, but he's going to get it to his dynamic playmaker where he has just a little bit of space and he can make a move to pick up the first down. Nice throw there by the quarterback. Third catch for Dixon. It goes in motion now. And it's Courtney on the inside give. Burrows across the 30. Jordan Rogers the tackle to gain a five. Offensive lineman T. Kellum and Karsten Williams on the right side. Getting a good push. Now midway through the second quarter, Carthage taking its time. Carthage and La Vega met in the semifinals in 2015 and 2017, splitting the pair. This is the first time they've met in a state championship game. Courtney again off tackle. Lowers the shoulder, ridden down by Javon Eigelhart after a gain of three. Yeah, I go hard doing a nice job of coming up. Slowing down the momentum. You saw Jordan Rogers there, an arm tackle. Not going to bring Mason Courtney down. 
third and two. Courtney. He has the first down. Ooh, a lot of popping. Ted, we can hear the hits up here in the booth. This is what we all expected. With the kind of defense that La Vega plays, the power that Carthage brings. And a tough physical run. Courtney picking up the first down, but not much after that. Needed two, picked up three. Carthage putting together a solid drive. And they finish it off. Horton to the end zone. Dixon over the shoulder grab. Touchdown, Carthage. Playmaker. All of these run plays, all of these short pass plays, bringing the defense in, knowing, building up to where you can get a one-on-one -on -one with your star receiver. Coverage was not bad at all, but that was a perfect pass and the perfect control of the body by Dixon. And Brennan Phillips ties the score at 14. Kelvante Dixon in the end zone for the 18th time this season. We are all knotted at 14. The UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest are brought to you by your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By Jack in the Box, proud sponsor of the Texas UIL Championships. By Polaris Ranger, driven to do more. By Baylor Scott and White Health, changing health care for the better. By Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud official sponsor of the UIL. And by Main Event, the most fun you can have under one roof. Main Event Entertainment, together we play. Now we have the shootout breaking out here in the 4A Division I title game. Touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. 14 all after Kai Horton went up top to Kelvante Dixon for the 22-yard score. And Horton, the first-year starter, the junior Shea, acquitting himself well so far. But I'm really impressed with that last throw to Kelvante Dixon. I mean, you could not throw that any better than he did it was a perfect pass and it had to be a perfect pass to get over the defender drops it right into the splash zone which you practice ad nauseum but he threw a perfect pass and Dixon came up with a huge catch big play for the Carthage Bulldogs Madrano pop-up kick and a fair catch for La Vega and Boye So Landry Kinney and the La Vega offense back out there. 4.46 remaining in the half. All three timeouts in the pocket. Now Landry Kinney was on the state championship team a year ago for La Vega. Transferred midseason from Denton High School. And played multiple roles, a lot of DB. But now entrenched as the starting quarterback. You see his numbers so far. And... An offense that revolves around the running game. Cummings. Breaking tackles again. And out to the 40. Nine yards on first down. Lister on the stop. I think it was Lou Holtz who said it, but it's like lighting a match to check your gasoline level. That's what it feels like when you see Elijah Cummings. He almost lost the ball. He ran into it, got a little bit of a bump there, re-secured it, picked up those nine yards. But man, he is dynamic. Don Hyde says, hey, even at his size, 5'7", 170, he can run through you in addition to running past you. Off the play fake. Malachi Wright over the middle in Carthage territory to the 38, 23 yards. DeAndre Bowman was in coverage. Well, that ball comes out so quick and so pure, right into the hands of Malachi Wright. Great route by Wright to cut it off and get in front of Bowman. And Kenny with a perfect strike downfield. Both these teams now starting to move the ball offensively. After the slow start. 
McKinney again looking for right and a little too much on it Wright had the step on Bowman Malachi Wright was smelling touchdown again like he did a year ago scoring twice in the championship game came up limping off the field now on second and ten Cummings hopping over his own man and surging ahead for three to the 35 Cole Whitlock among the Bulldogs to meet him Oh, we've got our sky cam driven by Polaris Ranger again for every game this week This is day three of four of the UIL football state championships here on Fox Sports Southwest Both teams have been so good on third down thus far. This is third and seven for La Vega Wright is back on the field bottom of your picture Kinney scrambling Wobbly pass caught by Jarquay Walton, but he's short of the first down Cole Whitlock made the tackle I love the presence there by Landry Kinney as he's rolling out to his right He's trying to find an open receiver downfield He allows the defenders to come up to him He takes a step or two back and he kind of lost the ball downfield He really didn't have anything going but he did pick up positive yards and it looks like the Pirates are going to go for it here on fourth Line to gain the Carthage 28. Kenny on the rollout. To the boundary. Intercepted. Yes, it is. Miles Halton takes it away for Carthage. His team leading sixth pick of the year. Yeah, Landry Kenny on the run. Tries to throw the ball downfield. Look for a nanosecond that he had a window. Miles Halton. With his sixth interception on the season. You see that ball touched the turf. Doesn't really matter. It's fourth down. Do you want to call it an interception? Do you want to call it a turnover really on, on the downs? field is an interception. The well, previous play is under further review. If, if you're the Bulldogs, you'd almost like it not to be yeah. an interception because you That's want the right. field position. That's but right. Certainly, as you said, on fourth down, there's a turnover regardless. Let's see here again. Yeah, that, yeah. That's probably not going to stand, and Carthage is going to end up with better field position. Yep. So we're going to go back to the fifth interception. Yeah. Halton says, well, five, five total. Hey, coach. I'm with you. Miles Halton says, coach, I want my sixth. <laughs> give, me my, give me number six on the year. But in any event, Carthage will take over with two minutes to go in the half. And talk about this Bulldogs defense interceptions wise. Again, Darren Preston in his ninth year as a defensive coordinator for head coach Scott Surratt. 21 interceptions on the season by this Bulldog secondary. Miles Halton, one of the fastest players on the team. As we check out some of the reviewable plays in second straight year now that instant replay is available at the UIL state championships here in Arlington and this is certainly falls under one of those categories another look yep the ball bounces there and then it's going to be down around the waist and not yeah. controlled so and this is one of those things where they're getting the time right they know where the spots going to be right yeah where that line of scrimmage was for La Vega Bill Theodore thought he was ready to give us the call and just a couple of more moments so let me explain something real quick yeah so when you see this I, I was in a meeting one time with Red Cashin and Red Cashin came in and everybody said, you know, guys give the officials a lot of heat about not making the right call. And he said, but I'm going to give you a situation. He gave a situation nobody could answer. After said, further review, the pass was incomplete. That was fourth down. The ball will be placed at the previous spot, which is the 31-yard line. 
first and ten cartridge. So Red, Red Cash and described yeah. a scenario yeah. and this room full of men were sitting around and talking about football and he starts counting. He goes, clock's ticking. What's yeah. the decision? Right. And no one, oh, man. no one in that room got it right. Speaking of it, time, it's a lot harder than it, it oh, looks. Oh, absolutely. You know, last year when instant replay was put into place for the UIL state championships, they timed every replay uh, that happened. The average time was a minute 40. That's not that That's bad. That's not too bad. That is not bad at all. <laughs> well, it's a clean operation. It's not that bad, but it's also equally important uh, or more important to get it right. Of course. Yep. Carthage, all three timeouts and two minutes to play here in the first half of a tie game in the 4A Division I state championship. And they start at their own 31. It's Courtney banging ahead to the 39, eight yards before Keon Reese greets him. And to this offensive line, T. Kellum, number 75, you're going to see him way downfield, providing blocks and pushing people around. Very aggressive, big athletic offensive line for this Carthage football team. Courtney again as Carthage works up tempo now, late in the half, a first down for the Bulldogs. Eight more yards. Third straight carry for Mason Courtney. Slithers ahead across midfield. Vernon Walker there defensively for La Vega. Again, Carthage has all three timeouts as we dip under a minute 15. Scott Surratt says that Don Hyde, La Vega's coach, is the best defensive mind he's faced in 30 years of coaching. Underneath, it's Courtney out of the backfield. And a first down across the Pirate 40. Ten yep. yards. It's been all Mason Courtney so far. Yeah, all running plays up until that pass play. And Kai Harton had forever in a day to throw the football. That offensive line, a solid wall of red. Horton was able to go down, finally checks it down to Mason Courtney for the first down. Final minute of the half. Courtney dancing inside the 35. Seven-yard pickup here. Jordan Rogers, the tackle. And now Carthage calls its first time out with 48 seconds remaining. Let's tell you about UIL One Act Play, founded in 1927. This is the largest high school play production or festival in the world. Six possible levels of competition and schools of similar size present an 18 to 40 minute play. It's evaluated by three judges or just a single judge. Amazing work what students all across the state put together year after year. And you'll see, especially, of course, at the uh, the smaller classifications, some of these guys that are here in Arlington, oh, yeah. they are on stage yes. for one-act play. You see them on stage, see them on the field, some of them in the smaller classifications, as you said, on the field and part of the band. Involvement everywhere and opportunities everywhere. You know, when that came up, you know, uh, Followell, he started doing a little salsa dance. <laughs> I mean, he, he was kind of showing off a little bit. And, uh, apparently, he played a trombone in one of these... Uh, events when he was in high school. Oh, Horton under pressure, and he lofts it over the head of Courtney trying to set up the screen. I want to see uh, you and Todd Dodge in a play back at Port Arthur Jefferson. Oh. I think that would be wow. fun. I wonder what play it would be. Yeah, <laughs> what you guys have done. Another look at the failed screen. Yeah, great pressure up front by La Vega. They finally get to Kai Horton, and he puts too much air on the pass. Mason Courtney not able to come down with it. On this drive, Courtney with four carries for 27 yards and a reception for 10 yards. And now 32. 42 seconds in the half. Courtney all alone in the gun. Play clock is at four. Look out here. Down to one. They got to call a timeout. Uh, Scott Surratt is timeout. irate. Carthage, it's their second timeout of the half. It's when you try to do something different. 
So you go to the empty backfield for Horton, and he had Mason Courtney out to the single side out as a wide receiver, and then three receivers to his right, and it just never got in sync, didn't get the play call where they wanted it. Well, La Vega, the defending champion in 4A Division One, it's And we flash back to last year's matchup against Liberty Hill. In the second half, Dante Stewart with fireworks. This kickoff to begin the third quarter. A 4A state championship record. 94-yard kick return for a score. Later, Ayra Rawls the third. Then a sophomore to Malachi Wright for the touchdown. His second of the game. And LaVega knocking off Liberty Hill 35-21 for their second state championship. And the first for Don Hyde as head coach. He took over for Willie Williams, promoted from defensive coordinator to head coach last year. And he's going for back-to-back -back in his second year at the helm. Third and two for Carthage. Horton on the draw. He's engulfed. Latravius Johnson, Manny Ruiz are there for La Vega. What a stand by La Vega defensively. They've been getting gashed on this entire drive. And after the timeout, they come out and they shut Kai Horton down on the quarterback run. And Avante Montgomery, number 44, getting good pressure, pushing the center of that offensive line into the backfield. Latravius Johnson, honorable mention, all state his first year as the starting middle linebacker for La Vega. He actually moved in over the summer. First year at La Vega. John Hyde says that it took him a while to pick up his defensive system. It's a check with me type system like you see so often on offense when the quarterback looks up, looks to the sideline for the call. And it's a lot for the middle linebacker has to make all the calls for him to process the information. But Johnson has come along steadily. And of course, named Paul State by the end of the year. Yeah, what a great contribution he has made to this team. And Coach Hyde, I mean, again, I say wizard, genius, savant, something. He, he's, he is one of those, or maybe all of those, as a defensive coordinator, and he understands and knows defense, and that's what they do more than anything else at La Vega. Defense, they're good at it. They live it, they breathe it. Fort halftime analysis from this game. Gunner winning their second title last night. A lot more coming up at the half. Fourth and four now for Carthage. And again, the empty gun for Kai Horton. It's Kel Williams and a first down for Carthage. Out of bounds with 32 seconds in the half. Five yards on fourth and four. What a clutch throw there by Kai Horton. And we talk about him having a big arm, but he is, we've seen him drop a few passes perfectly. Trajectory is great on the touchdown to Dixon and now on this critical fourth down. He finds Kel Williams on the sideline for a first down. Pass right on the money. Look out, parabolic mic operator. Kel Williams coming right for you. It's a contact sport. Yes, it is for everyone on the sideline, too. No timeout for Carthage. 30 seconds. Out of the backfield, Courtney. Courtney to the 20. Jordan Rogers made the tackle. And the clock continues to roll. Yeah, Horton. It's second and short. No timeouts. And Horton clocks it with 10 seconds remaining. Scott Surratt's probably wondering, was that good enough for the first down, which yep. would have obviously stopped the clock momentarily. I could tell you of all the things that you have time to practice as an offense, clocking it is not one of them. And you can see that the Bulldogs were a little bit, not disoriented, but just took them a little bit more time. This is a high school football team. When I was in high school, if you would have had to clock the ball, it probably would have been in that minute and 40 seconds yep. on the replay official booth <laughs> timeline. 
clock it. Why are we clocking? And, and Surratt also just, wants a, a clean operation there. Absolutely. Hey, get the ball set so we can go, go, go. Yep. Get the down marker in place. Coach Hyde down on the field. He wants a little bit of clarity, too. Right. So it's third and one from the 20. Ten seconds to go. Horton on the move. It's Dixon. Touchdown, Carthage. Horton finds his man again. The Bulldogs are back in front. Devontae Dixon had a big game last week. He's having a big game this week as well, trying to help his team to a state championship. Great job of finding a space open. There was a pressure coming on Kai Horton as he's running off to his right. Timeout, La Vega. It's their first timeout of the half. He just floats the ball out there, and it was a great move by Dixon to go to the ball and then spin because he knew he was short of the goal line, but he knew where the goal line was. Takes that immediate spin and gets into the end zone. And overall, Shea, again, how about how calm Kai Horton and the offense were in this situation? Last week against Lampasas in the semifinals, a last-minute drive, Horton finding Dixon for the game winner with 13 seconds remaining, and they're able to beat the clock at the end of the first half here in the state championship game. Well, you talk about the confidence and the calm when you have the playmakers that are available to Kai Horton with Dixon and Williams, Wade, Courtney. These guys are all big-time playmakers, and then you've got that big, heavy offensive line. This Bulldog team is a tough out, and you know, there's a reason why they've won six state championships. That's right. And, and they've never lost it, in a state championship game under Scott yes. Surratt. It is 13th season now. As a scoring play, they're going to take a second look at it. And there's no need. There's really no need. But Don Hyde of La Vega might have called the timeout just in case. Well, you had one. It is the end of the second quarter. Now Phillips for the PAT. And Carthage has the lead. Three seconds to play in the first half. 21-14. Scott Surratt as we said, has been at Carthage as the head coach for 13 years now. He is 56 and 6 in playoff games. So, yes, six state championships and six playoff losses in those 13 years. A remarkable decade plus long run for Surratt. Grew up in Linden, went to East Texas Baptist University and has built a dynasty at Carthage, beginning in 2008 with their first state title, a victory over Salina. Well, the Carthage Bulldog program has become known as a, a dynamic, explosive offensive. I mean, they put up pinball numbers every single year under Coach Surratt, and they're, <laughs> there's no letting up, and they're reloading with gunner caps, they were dynamic, and they were winning the state championship. They were driving deep in the playoffs. All of these things, his offensive scheme and the guys that he has to build this program around year after year after year is consistency. I mean, they were the leading. Uh, they had the most consecutive wins last year at yep. 40 right. before they lost to Liberty Hill in the semifinals. They just thought they did was start over again. They're 15-0 this season and looking to see how long they can get another streak to go. Carthage Bulldog program in great hands. This is Scott Surratt. It's quick kick. Keon Reese 
picks it up for La Vega. Two seconds to go in the half. And Surratt said it this week. I, I, I say it every year. I'm just focused on the next ring. I don't have time to think about four, five, six, oh, maybe yes. number seven. Just the next one. Just and the and next. It's, it's a common answer from coaches who have achieved so much like him, but it's also the right answer. Well, it's certainly the right answer. It, it's, you know, every coach that we ask them said they want to go one and oh in this game, right. of course. But he does that every season. Arthur's trying to become the ninth program in the UIL to win seven at least seven state championships. Let's see if there's going to be a little bit of razzle-dazzle here. The Flag last game Flag is down. on the offense, number one, five-yard penalty, replay first down. Yeah, play clock ran out. I was thinking maybe you're looking like you're going to just take the knee with the deep, slow Dravion to great. Hanging back there, but maybe you sneak a ball out to Malachi Wright, see if he can go get a jump ball. From the 41, yeah, nope. it's just the kneel down. In the final seconds of the first half, Kai Horton leads Carthage down the field. He hits Kelvante Dixon. Second time they've hooked up for a touchdown. And Carthage is on top as they head to the locker room. 21-14 over La Vega. Down to Katie Engelson with Scott Surratt. Coach, how has Kai Horan affected this game? Well, I thought he, you know, at first he struggled on the little third down play, but, um, you know, I thought he played very well, finished very well in the half, and it was a big two-minute drive by him and a uh, big play by Kelvante Dixon to end the half. So hopefully we got a little momentum going in. How will that last scoring drive impact your message at the half? Well, they get the ball, so we got to come out and get them off the field and then go score again and, and take care of the ball. We had the one turnover. It was costly, and um, so uh, we got to take care of it. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Katie, thanks so much. Carthage's first lead of the first half comes in the final seconds. Mason Courtney and company leading La Vega 21-14 in this dream matchup in 4A Division I. The Ford halftime is next. team this decade leads the defending champs at halftime what a show by two stars in this Kelvante Dixon doing his thing Elijah Cummings on the other side with two touchdowns for La Vega Dixon with two for Carthage and this is just a slugfest between heavyweights we welcome you into the Ford halftime report Rick Renner alongside Ken Purcell the coach with 12 state championship rings and the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas football magazine Greg Tepper well guys we knew it was going to be physical la vega though gets you know the first punches in early and then carthage punches back unbelievable game i, I don't know how this is going to end it can go either way right now they're even on turnovers one and one that last drive was critical uh, they came and made some plays it, it wasn't a good drive as scott surratt would say they had a lot of mistakes but the thing is with three seconds left they got in the end zone yeah, this has been a game between two supremely talented, supremely well-coached squads. I mean, you want to talk about teams that deserve to be on this big stage. You are seeing this why. This is a Texas high school football at its best. Uh, I have been really impressed, I think, by the line play from Carthage. I, I think their offensive line has given Kai Horton time to throw. That was the showcase matchup for me. Could that offensive line against this nasty defensive line from La Vega hold up? And so far, so good for the Bulldogs. Hey, Coach, you talk about protecting the football. La Vega's been able to force 14 turnovers in the playoffs, and they've scored on all of those. All right, let's take a look at the first half highlights of this one, and it was a matchup of heavyweights. La Vega looking to go back-to-back -back in their third state title in five years. Carthage has won six state championships, all coming since 2008. They never lose in the state title game. First quarter, Elijah Cummings finds a hole. He'll coast 19 yards for the touchdown, his 23rd of the year. Breakaway speed, and Bellmead is in the building. Then in the second quarter, Mason Courtney would get things going for the Bulldogs. He goes up the gut for a five-yard touchdown. Courtney rushed for 85 yards in the first half. Great running back, reads the hole, made the play. 
Jar uh, Jarquay while well, on here. Look at his fine little daylight down the sideline. Eventually, he'd be brought down at the Carthage 15-yard line. That's a 50-yard run for Walton there, and that would set the table for Cummings, who escapes a tackle, cuts back, breaks another tackle, scores his second touchdown of the game, seven carries, 66 yards for him. The balance from Elijah Cummings in this has been remarkable. He has been the engine behind this LaVega offense. And then the Bulldogs would continue to respond on the next possession. Kai Horton throws it up. Kelvante Dixon able to get in there. Beautiful catch. 22-yard TD strike there. 12 for 17, 144 yards in the first half for him. And as you look at the numbers, very evenly matched. But on the scoreboard, Carthage leads it by seven. Well, basically that last drive was it. Uh, and again, I said it was not a great drive, but it ended in the end zone, and that's what counts. Uh, you know, Scott Surratt, if you saw him, how discouraged he was when they got the, the delay. He had to use a timeout to keep from getting the delay. Then it was fourth and three, and they didn't get it, and so he had to use his last timeout. And then of all things, he produces a touchdown anyway. Yeah, what you've seen is some balance from the Carthage attack, right? We didn't necessarily expect them to be able to run the ball, but the running game has been there uh, for Carthage so far, plowing the road uh, with that big offensive line, and Kai Horton has settled in in this game. He missed a couple of throws early. He has settled in. On the other side, the running game for La Vega is there. They're getting some seams, and you're seeing that speed that's so dangerous for La Vega. I feel like we're in for a fantastic second half. Yeah, Don Hyde coming into this game said, hey, we don't got a lot of D1. FBS products on this team, but I'll tell you what, these kids do nothing but play hard football, and we're seeing this in this very physical game. Time now for the Baylor Scott White Health game diagnosis, and what about that second quarter for Kelvante Dixon? Two touchdowns, Coach. He's an unbelievable player. If you can get him the ball, uh, just get it in his hands. They're throwing what's called an X screen a lot, where he's just taking step back, short routes, but then they're letting him use his talent. And then, of course, he goes over the, ke over the shoulder catch here. Just a great, great pass. He traps the ball so well out of the quarterback's hand. I mean, that touchdown grab, he had to come back to the ball to make it. And then the, the having that kind of ability, that's, that's special, Coach. Not every receiver is able to track the ball out of the quarterback's hand. But Calvante Dixon is the complete package. And, you know, LaVega, has played great passing attacks before, but I don't know if they've played a true number one receiver like Calvante Dixon, like they're facing today. Yeah, think about Jordan Rodgers. He's been all over the place making tackles on that La Vega defense. How do they slow him down? Because just physically, he's taller and he's always open above his head. Well, <laughs> there are mismatches on both sides of the ball right now, on both teams, and you have to change the way you're going to deal with certain athletes, whether it's coverage or whether it's blocking them or covering them or whatever, which side of the ball it's on. You have to mix it up. You cannot just take one person out of the game in one manner. We have a way to counter that, and that's what's going to happen in the second half. And there are probably people at home saying, well, why don't you just bracket coverage Calvante Dixon, and it's probably not a bad idea. But remember, he's not alone. Kel Williams is also a very talented receiver for this Carthage attack. It is not just Kelvante Dixon. So there's going to be some big decisions to be made for Don Hyde in the second half. How do we handle Kelvante Dixon? Because right now uh, he's been the he's been the game changer in this matchup. Let's take a look at the highlights from last night's nightcap in the 3A Division II final between Gunner and Paul Pewitt. Paul Pewitt looking for their first state title since 1998. Gunner back in the state championship game for a third time in the last four years. We pick it up at the second quarter. Clayton Reed will punch it in for the touchdown. He rushed for 119 yards, two scores. He was your offensive MVP, and Gunner was up 22 to 8. But back come the Bramas. Hudson Graham to Kadrian Johnson, and he makes every man miss on this, changes directions, and then how about the pick six? Are you kidding me? Look at this, 75 yards of zigzag. I swear, I think this is one of the finest interception returns you will see at any level. Watch the NFL, watch college football, that's fine. You won't see what Kadrian Johnson did. And that tied the game at 22 all. So we move on to the third quarter. And Peyton Lowe would scamper in from four yards out. He had 88 yards on the ground and two scores. Lowe also took home the defensive MVP in this one with 10 tackles. Fourth quarter, Bryson Rigsby, the four-yard run. 99 yards in the game for him. Remember, he was the guy on defense that made the stop at the one-foot line against Canadian. And Gunner wins it 43-22 to as the Tigers take home their second title in four years. The Tigers didn't throw the ball once in the second half, and it was back to basics. Just run the ball and nothing bad. 
bad can happen. Let's get some reaction from the gunner side. You know, again, the kids just dug in. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of just adjustments or anything like that. We felt like we were playing really good defense. We just had some bad things happen to us. You know, like I said, coming out of the half right there, I think we had a bad five or six minutes there. But, um, you know, we just kept doing what we were doing, and, and our, our kids just kept fighting. Well, we just knew that we were making mistakes in that last uh, second quarter, and we just knew if we came out and played the way that we should that we'd come out with the victory, and that's what happened. Congratulations to the Tigers. Jake Fazell now 60-3 and three in the last four years and two rings. Now, usually Gunner runs the ball 90% of the time. They had a couple of turnovers when they had the big lead in the first half, and they decided, you know what? We're just going to exclusively run the ball in the second half, and that's what they did. 29 plays, 29 rushes. You know, that was a two-sided game. They have a great running game. They decided we're going to go with it. At halftime last night, I said Pewitt has to get their base offense back in gear, which was a running offense as well. Pewitt never was able to get that done during the game, and a lot of that goes because of Gunner's defense. But Gunner got their offense in sync. They got their defense in sync, and that's how you win championships. Yeah, you're exactly right. That that Pewitt stayed in this game by hitting big, spectacular plays that are not necessarily in their normal DNA. They are a slot T team. They want to grind it out on the ground. And P Gunner played a fantastic uh, defensive game plan against them on the whole, shutting down uh, their team. I believe they had 43 yards in the second half. And then that offense, when it gets going, and Hudson yeah. Graham at the quarterback spot is a sophomore. He's a magician back there, just handing the ball off uh, to whoever needs it. It was a it was a clinic last night in the second half for Gunner bringing a second title home to Grayson County. Yeah, they came in, you know, kind of out of nowhere and won that first title a few years back, and here they are. They've established themselves as now a perennial power in the Lone Star State. Let's take a timeout on the Ford Halftime Report. Coming up next, a preview of the games ahead on a fabulous Friday at AT&T Stadium. Carthage up by seven at halftime. Today, Fox Sports Southwest Plus. The battle to be best in Texas continues as teams across the state collide inside AT&T Stadium. Don't miss today's matchups during the UIL Football State Championship on Fox Sports Southwest Plus. We're gonna have a funky, I have a funky Christmas. It's gonna be a funky, I have a funky Christmas. Hit it. Christmas. High School Scoreboard Live on Fox Sports Southwest. State championship game. Carthage going for their seventh title since 2008, winning the dream matchup that we almost got last year until Liberty Hill got in the way. What a lineup we have for the rest of the day. Pleasant Grove in its third straight state championship game against a surprising Wimberley team that cashes in whenever they get here. Two for two coming in. And how about the nightcap and the battle of the unbeatens with Denton Ryan and Shadow Creek. Two great quarterbacks going at it in Pleasant Grove and Wimberley with Cooper McCollum and Ben Harmon. Yeah, this is a Pleasant Grove offense that you've got to see to believe. So it's the wing tee, right? But they're going to throw a lot out of it because quarterback Ben Harmon is a playmaker and they are going to score a lot because of the way that they operate this offense. It's very hard to game plan for. They have receivers running free, it seems like, every single time. Meanwhile, Wimberley's the hottest offense in the state. Cooper McCollum has been unconscious in the playoffs. Absolutely lighten up scoreboards and lighten up defenses. He's going to put on a show on the big stage. My question comes on the defense defensive side coach it may only take two or three stops but who is able to get those stops and looking ahead Denton got a Ryan against Shadow Creek interesting dynamics coming in Brad Butler is a Randy Allen disciple coach and he knocked uh, you know he knows all about uh, knocking Ryan out of the playoffs three straight years but uh, what a matchup of athletes we'll have in this one with Denton Ryan and Shadow Creek oh it's unbelievable athletes you know Denton Ryan their defense is back you know, I've talked to a lot of coaches that knew Denton Ryan a few years back when they had unbelievable defenses. Well, they're back. And as far as Shadow Creek, what a story for a team there. A young program filled with athletes, but they make plays. It ought to be an unbelievable game. Yeah, 30 and 1 in two years of existence, Tep, for Shadow Creek. <laughs> the name to know for Shadow Creek is Kyron Drones. He is the quarterback for them. He is a true pocket passer, and he has an opportunity to give Shadow Creek their first ever title. And Denton Ryan with the best trio of two way players with Drew Sanders is going to Alabama, Jatavian Sanders is going to Texas, and Billy Bowman Jr., who is also going to Texas. They play the entire game, and they make plays all over 
the field. Let's take a timeout on the Ford Halftime Report. When we come back, final thoughts as we are at halftime of Carthage and La Vega, ready to get back at it. Final thoughts after this. Carthage head coach Scott Surratt, an incredible 56-6 and six in the playoffs in position for his third title in four years, seven overall. Coming up, second half action, Carthage up by seven. Guys, what are the keys to a victory here? Well, of course, uh, La Vega gets the ball first. We're going to see if Scott Surratt made the defensive adjustments he needs to make, and vice versa, we've got to see if when they get the ball, has La Vega made the defensive adjustments? First series on both sides is always critical. For me, it's about La Vega mixing coverages. Right now, I, I feel like Calvante Dixon is the difference maker in this game. La Vega's got to find a way to neutralize him. You're not going to be able to take him out of the game, but they got to mix up coverages, make Kai Horton hesitate one or two sec extra seconds and let that defensive line get to him. Coming up next, the Class 4A Division One State Championship game in the second half. Make sure you join us after the game for complete post-game coverage. What a physical great game. Enjoy it. We'll see you later. High school sports under the spotlight. Sunday on Fox Sports Southwest. Touchdown, La Vega. The Pirates strike first. Dixon, over the shoulder grab, playmaker, it's Dixon, Horton finds his man again. We could have a classic in the making here at the 4A Division I State Championship game back here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It's Carthage 21, La Vega 14. And we welcome you back to the booth, Ted Emmerich along with former Texas A&M receiver Shea Walker I think this is everything we could have hoped for in the first step between two teams that have combined for the last four state championships here in 4A D1 well certainly they've been going at each other and it's been a great first half and you think about the offensive mind of, of Scott Surratt and you think about the defensive mind of Don Hyde this is what you're gonna get you're gonna get a fantastic ball game Ty Hart opened up down to Kel Williams on the very first play of the game. Got a couple of other receivers involved. And how about the perfect pass down to Devontae Dixon to make that touchdown grab. And then he goes again and doubles it right at the end of the first half. That's a touchdown that put this Carthage team ahead. We take a look at the Ford leaderboard, the numbers for quarterback Kai Horton and receiver Kelvante Dixon. Those two touchdowns at the end of the half, erasing a 14-7 La Vega lead. Well, and it's been something that this Carthage offense did, Ted, in the second quarter of the game. They really started to rely on the run game, and Mason Courtney, they've got all their weapons working for them right now. Before the start of the third quarter, down to Jason Spells with Don Hyde. Coach Hyde, you get the ball to start this. What do you want to see established on this drive? Well, we just got to do a better job of, of, of executing the game plan, you know. And uh, from a defense standpoint, we got to quit being nervous in the secondary and, and, and make them make plays. And from an offense standpoint, we got to keep blocking and, and, and driving the ball. We got an opp opportunity. How do you disrupt that connection we've seen from Calvante and Kyle on the other side? They're very difficult to stop because you know you got to you got to try to help, and then you can't get a pass rush. So you know, I mean, you got to mix it up. Thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Jason, thank you. Hyde's offense will start the third quarter with the ball. They ran for 132 yards as a team. Saw big runs from both Elisha Cummings and Jarquay Walton. Cummings has both of the touchdowns for the Pirates. Johnny Madrano will kick it away for Carthage. In that pooch kick, fair catch, Jesse Major Sterling at the 30. All right, we heard what Coach Don Hyde wants to see. What would you like to see in the LaVega offense to start out here, Shaq? Well, I like the way that Landry Kenny executes the offense. He's a big, athletic guy. He's got a strong arm, and he's got weapons. As Malachi Wright, we saw him early making some contributions, but 
it, this it kind of goes against the grain for this defensive-minded team to really go and just air it out. But I think put the ball in the air a little bit more and get downfield to some playmakers. Elijah Cummings is also a great pass catcher coming out of the backfield, as is Jakarwe Walton. First down from the 30. It's Cummings. Lowers the shoulder. He is like a bowling ball. Shea, Jay and Javon King makes the tackle. That's a gain of seven. And a flag thrown high in the air at the end of the play. Oh, a little Carthage. extracurricular activity. Yeah, the Carthage players at the end of the play, they're celebrating a little bit. Yeah, you got to keep your poise in a state championship game. Certainly in more important for Don Hyde to talk to his star running back. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number 21. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's second down. That's so, number 21's first unsportsmanlike penalty for the game. And remember, a second one means an ejection. Yep, the shove at the end of the play, pushing Jai Brazier. It's unnecessary. Yeah, well, it felt like Razor was giving him a little bit of the business, stayed on him a little long, but you have to keep your cool if you're Elijah Cummings. You, you, you can't lose your cool. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. So instead of what was a seven-yard run, backtrack to the 22, second and 18. Dangerous pass there. King breaking it up. It was intended for Jarquay Walton. We talk about Kenny. He thinks he's going to get an easy route out in the flat. It's just a little bit behind Walton and Javon King, an eyelash from taking that into the end zone for a pick six. He had a Ball's pick six last week against Lampasas. Ball's got to be out in front of the receiver on that play. Third and 18. Chambliss in motion. Conservative. It's Cummings, and he's upended after a short gain by Mason Bobo. La Vega will punt. They don't want to take any chances on third and long. Well, what, as you said, started out to be a promising drive with the seven-yard gain on first down is all negated by the dead ball personal foul penalty. The Pirates now having to punt the ball away and Carthage stands to get really good field position. Craig McNew awaits the kick from Jordan Rogers. Great rush. Rogers was trying to sell it. No flag. And McNew the fair catch. A 39-yard punt by Rogers. So a three and out for La Vega to begin the third quarter. Well, next season marks a historic milestone for the UIL as it celebrates 100 years of high school football. The first state championship game was played in 1920. And today's schools carry on the tradition and excitement of high school football in Texas. High school football is more than the game on the field. It celebrates the band, cheerleaders, drill teams, spirit groups, color guard, and every hometown and local community. The UIL thanks fans for all they do to support these students. First down for Carthage. Horton dials up the deep ball. Dixon! All systems go! 63-yard touchdown! Coach Surratt, that's exactly what he said. We need to get a stop and go down and score. I'm not sure if he thought it would have happened this fast, but I'm sure he's pretty happy about it. Another pinpoint great throw by Kai Horton. Devontae Dixon, third touchdown reception of the game. He closed the first half with his second of the game. And it doesn't take long for Dixon to tack on his third. 20 receiving touchdowns now on the year for the senior, Kelvante Dixon. 
who we should say is the younger brother of Keontae Ingram. Now a Texas Longhorn. Dixon making his mark in the state championship game today. It's 21 unanswered points for the Carthage Bulldogs, who now lead La Vega 28-14 here in the third. All three of those touchdowns scored by Kelvante Dixon. Phil came into this championship game with 17, and now he's at 20 and counting. Dixon unstoppable. Playmaker, speed to burn, tracks the ball beautifully. Another great throw by Kai Horton. Dixon does the rest. So I mentioned Jay, younger brother of Keontae Ingram, who is Texas's yep. leading rusher this season, and of course a standout at Carthage himself at back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons, back-to-back -back state championships in 2016 and 2017. And his brother Ingram gave a Twitter shout-out this week. He said about Dixon, he raw. He raw. Yeah. I'll say this about Ingram, he right. Yeah. <laughs> Rogers on the return for the Pirates. Out near the 25. Calvante Dixon was committed to Arkansas for a good while, decommitted in November after Chad Morris was fired. And yes, Texas is very well in the mix along with many others. Well, he's such a dynamic playmaker, and it's it's uh, one of those things where you saw in the open, uh, the one-handed catch. I mean, he can make all the plays. He plays above the defenders. He's not an overly imposing guy from a, from a stature standpoint, but he is so incredibly athletic and tracks the ball so well. Well, they get down by two scores now. Had a short gain, if anything, on first down for Cummings. Quan Brown makes the tackle for Carthage. Brown was injured early in the season. This is his third game back. No gain officially. Kenny, the play fake. The sideline incomplete. He wanted D'Amico Chambliss. And third and ten. Yeah, the ball just sailed a little bit on Kenny as he was rolling out to his right, throwing on the run. This is an important moment, right? Yes, this Pirates offense, they need to get something going here. It's third and long, obviously, but got to pick up a positive play, create some field position. Kenny, a rocket. Well over the head of Chambliss, but a flag. Javon King had the assignment. Well, for all the great plays that Javon King has made, that's one where he just grabs the jersey of Chambliss. The ball was thrown out a little bit over his head. That'll move the La Vega. Holding. On the defense, number one, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot was against an eligible pass receiver. It's an automatic first down. Much needed first down for this Pirates offense. You see there as he was making the cut coming out, Chambliss. So first down on third and 10, thanks to the penalty. Cummings. Lifted up and knocked down by Cole Whitlock, the safety. That's a gain of four. Well, the cutback run is what this Carthage Bulldog defense has had to defend all game long. And you see Whitlock coming down from that safety spot, squares up beautifully. It's a form tackle. Textbook. Like he's picking up a wheelbarrow. Yeah, just dropped it right down. That, that's a heads up play by your safety coming in. Limiting that game. Thank it to Cummings this time. Here's to Great. Twisted down. Miles Halton. No gain on the play. The passing game around the line of scrimmage is where you're just trying to out athlete and make sure you get your ball out on time. But Miles Halton does a great job 
of coming in and ensuring that that play went for no gain. Once again, key third down for La Vega. They need six. Cummings. Knocked down shy of the line to gain. It's Whitlock making another tackle. What a series by Cole Whitlock. Your senior safety coming down. Knows that he has to play a factor in the run game. Up near the line of scrimmage. An outstanding job of coming in and taking Elijah Cummings down. Whitlock Shea, another Bulldog named honorable mention All-State this week, and he's actually a converted receiver. Rogers punts it away. This takes a Pirates roll. Inside the 10. And rests near the 5. 55 yards on the punt with that roll. Carthage backed up deep, but they're up by two touchdowns. Today on Fox Sports Southwest Plus, the battle to be best in Texas continues as teams across the state collide inside AT&T Stadium. Don't miss today's matchups during the UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest Plus. Puck is dropped and we're underway. Keep it for the end zone. School scoreboard live on Fox Sports Southwest. Unfortunately for La Vega, the 55 yard punt by Jordan Rogers that was touched down at the Carthage five yard line does not count. A penalty on the play, illegal formation, the call, and Rogers will have to kick it again. Greg McNew standing on the 35 yard line. And Rogers on Cork another. Higher kick and much shorter. Craters near the 45. Just bounce La Vega's way inside the 40. 29-yard punt this time as opposed to the 55-yarder before the penalty. So Carthage up 28-14. They have scored touchdowns on their last four possessions. This was a 14-7 La Vega game in the second quarter. But Carthage is humming now. Kai Horton. Wide of Dixon this time, who has three touchdowns for the dogs one of the few misfires from Kai Horton today I was gonna say we've seen two misfires from him that being the second one and if you think about it he's making these great throws downfield finding his receivers but that little straight pass for about I would say 18 yards is kind of giving him problems but 63 down the field to Dixon no hey, problem no problem <laughs> Just like we saw a moment ago. Second and ten. This time under center. Horton changing the play. It's a run for Mason Courtney. Falls across the 40. Let's send it down to Katie Engelson. Well, Coach Surratt's family, of course, cheering him and the Bulldogs on today. His wife, Summer, very proud of her husband. In fact, her Twitter bio reads, proud wife to six-time Texas high school football state champ, Scott Surratt. But Summer herself comes from a family of coaches. Get this, her cousin, Barry Switzer, former Dallas Cowboys head coach and, of course, former Oklahoma Sooner head coach. Coach Surratt actually told me today his daughter, who's a senior at Carthage, will be going to OU next year. Coach Switzer even gave her a shout-out on Twitter. And moments ago, guys, he tweeted it again saying good saying two good teams a great game but guys i think we know who he's rooting for in this one uh, there's no doubt about that katie thanks so much the pass to dixon is caught but it's short of the first down how about that it's great to have yeah. barry watching by the way yes sir coach switzer 
Still as active as ever, and man, is he a storyteller. <laughs> so fourth and one now for Carthage. See the open field tackle there by Ava Rawls yeah. on Kevontae Dixon. Great job of keeping him short of the first down. Bulldogs look like they're going to go for it on fourth. Yeah, not even at midfield. Here's Courtney to the outside. A first down. Now to the sideline. Courtney turning on the burners. He's in. Touchdown, Carthage. 54 yards. Yeah, Mason Courtney had a lot of grass. Wide side of the field, he only needed a yard to pick up the first down. It looked good blocking at the point of attack again by that physical offensive line. A couple of defenders bumped into each other, and Ava Rawls finally catches him, but not before Courtney crosses the goal line. Extra point by Brennan Phillips. Carthage opened the game with a lost fumble by Courtney and a punt on their second possession. Since then, five consecutive touchdowns and a 35-14 lead here in the 4A Division I state championship game. Jack in the box scoring drive. Four plays, 63 yards, and on fourth and a yard, it's Courtney for 54 to the end zone for his second touchdown. Take a look here at Kale Williams getting out and, and seeing that Courtney is coming around. He does a great job of pushing the defender inside, which bumps Ava Rawls off of his line. Rawls, as I said, able to catch up to Mason Courtney, but not before he crosses the goal line. Everything going the Bulldogs' way now. And really, it's just a matter of time with this Carthage offense, right? So many weapons. So many weapons. Again, we're going back to that massive offensive line that's creating these running lanes and these passing opportunities for this offense. And the skill position, guys, it's just working very well for the Carthage offense. Oh, there's some space. Yeah, but the fair catch was called for. It's oh, Jesse there, Major Sterling on the return. It looked like his teammate was the one who called for the fair catch. Boye. Delay of game on the receiving team. A fair catch was signaled. The ball carrier advanced the ball. Five yard period penalty from the catch. First down. I can't do that. Major Sterling was ready to go, but J. Brian Boye, number 11 in the white, he calls for the fair catch. Major Sterling hauls it in. And La Vega has to start at its own 20-yard line after the penalty. Now they really got to open it up with Kenny. They start with the zone read keeper. And Kenny picks up 10 yards. Cole Whitlock on the tackle. What a good move he put on Quentin Owens, the defensive end. Made him think he was going out to the sideline. Juke Seaman cuts it upfield, as you said, Ted, for 10-plus yards on that carry. And Get back in the game. It's just start yep. making positive plays if you're the Vega Pirates. Working with a little tempo here. Now it's Cummings. Bouncing off a couple of oh, defenders. What a run. What a wow. Run. Across the 45. Cummings is still going. Cummings down the sideline. And pushed out inside the 15 by Jay Kevion Tool. A determined 58 yard run by Cummings. Yeah, that's a positive play that you can build on. My goodness, he runs through arm tackle after arm tackle. Elijah Cummings gets hit near the line of scrimmage. Great job of blocking up there by Damian Brown. See all the defenders coming after him, and these guys are good tackling machines, but not able to bring Elijah Cummings down. Cummings now over 100 yards. Jarquay Walton spinning inside the five. Whitlock rips him down. And he is down at the one. First and goal for La Vega. Yeah, I love this response by the Pirates team. 
Down 35 14. Walton Hammer, again. End zone. Touchdown. There is the first response from La Vega. They're within two scores. Talk about the offensive line for the Pirates. Getting enough of a push and enough of a crease, and then the rest of it, Elijah Cummings. Walton, Walton finishes it off here. Up that's when he gets inside, right down near the one yard line. Again, offensive line doing a good job of creating just of enough space for the running backs to get through. Extra point by Chavez. Jarquay Walton in the end zone for the 19th time on the ground this season. Walton putting an exclamation point on that drive and much needed by these Pirates. Carthage had scored 28 in a row. Ala Vega with the 80 yard scoring drive. Remember backed up after the penalty. Fair catch signal. Her last four drives 33 yards. So they finally put something together. Obviously the big run by Cummings. Walton with the capper. Still plenty of time here. Yeah, you were down three touchdowns, but La Vega is the defending champion. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. The head coach won't let them go anywhere. Or their offensive coordinator, Ava Rawls. These guys are athletic. They're determined. They can get in any game. It only takes a couple of plays. It, we talk about this. All the great plays that we've seen so far in this game. I think that run by Elijah Cummings to get this team within two scores was a, a dynamic big time run and when his team needed it and he fought through about four, maybe five arm tackles to pick up that game. Chavez swings the leg. And the fair catch, Mason Bobo for Carthage. Scott Sarant's offense is cooking. As we take a look at the main event, player comparison. Kai Horton, three touchdowns through the air, all to Kelvante Dixon, who has 120 yards on seven receptions. And don't forget about Mason Courtney on the ground with 145 yards and two scores. Kai Horton, as Scott Surratt told us this week, had big shoes to fill. Gunner Caps 30 and 1 as a starter the last two years. But Horton stepped right in and took control of the huddle. Dixon is in motion. The pitch to Courtney. Pinballing forward. Inside the 40. Gain of five. Anthony Burns made the tackle. Tough run by Courtney. Difficult five yards. He got hit two or three times. He kept the legs driving when he got the back turned around. He kept pushing. Picking up an extra yard or two after contact. I'll tell you what, with the play of Courtney, in addition to how well the offensive line is protected, they have neutralized that La Vega defensive line for the most part. Screen to Dixon. Dixon out across midfield. First down, 11 yards. Johnson wrapped him up. Good pursuit by that Pirates defense to make sure that Dixon was not going to go any further. Take another look at just he cuts back in the middle. Looks like there's a couple of Pirates around him. And you see seven, eight, maybe nine hats. Vega 49. Horton off the pump. Horton's in trouble. Horton is sacked. First sack of the game. Detravion Thompson, his 16th of the year. It's a loss of nine. Well, after that touchdown by the Pirates offense, it's Pirates defense coming up, as you said, first sack of the game for Thompson. Finally, finally found a crease in that offensive line where they could finally get to Kai Horton and bring him down for a negative play. And again, La Vega without 
Maybe their best linebacker, Demarquise Hayes, because of a foot injury, the Kansas State signee. Holding on the defense, number 23. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's a first down. Wow. That's on Jesse Major Sterling, the corner. You see the sack by Thompson. Let's take a look. Top of your picture, 23 in the white. Well, I guess they misidentified the player. It's on Keon Reese, 22, defending Kel Williams. Oh, forget about the sack. Now Carthage with a first down at the 39 of La Vega. Horton underneath. Craig McNew tackled immediately. Aira rolls the third. It is a gain of two. Rawls nicknamed Trip because of his name. Rawls the third. Flag is down as Courtney takes the handoff. Again, Rawls the starting quarterback a year ago for La Vega when they won the state title. Moved to safety this year to become the so-called quarterback of the defense. Ball start on the offense, number three. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. It's on Dixon. That's a couple of penalties for Cavante. We've seen a little bit more tight end packages in the second half of this ball game. Montreal Smith going off. 6'2", 215-pound junior. Just another look, another wrinkle that Scott Surrett fault throws at you. And going to get an offside here by La Vegas defense. Free play. Horton downfield. Incomplete. Intended for Braden Wade. Well, Anthony Burns had great coverage downfield for the Pirates. Thompson might have jumped early here for La Vega. Offsides on the defense, number 97. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. And it is on Thompson, the second-team All-State defensive end. Right there. Twenty-four sacks for Thompson over the last two years. See the audible here, and Jordan Rogers making the same call defensively for La Vega. Screen for Courtney. Around the 35, flag is down. Johnson made the tackle. Uh, this is probably going against Carthage. Yeah, Jordan Rogers was held. There are a lot of La Vega fans down below us that rose to their feet in unison hollering for that flag to be thrown and it was holding on the offense number 74 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul repeat second down yeah take another look here jordan rogers diagnosed the play beautifully that's when you know you studied your scouting report when you go and you the offense makes an audible call you defensively go and make an audible call and you're right there on the spot for, to make the play Heads up there by Jordan Rogers. I mean, the sky's the limit for this guy. Only a junior. Once again, Bill Theodore misidentified the player. That was on 72. Kate Johnson, the left guard. Throw it back. Montrell Smith, the tight end. Breaks a tackle. Cutting it back. Inside the 30. How about the tight end screen for 19 yards and a first down? And I don't even have any statistics for Montrell Smith and how many catches he's had. Very many in the season, but my goodness, what a great play. And the, the razzle-dazzle, everything looked like it was going to go out to the wide side of the field. The pirouette by Kai Horton, perfect strike to Smith, and takes it down for a first down. Smith, the junior, his first catch today, 28th of the season. Beautiful design, right? Yeah, you see Kai Harton rolling out to the right. Of course, you had Mason Courtney that ran around like it could be a reverse. And then Montreal Smith just sneaks out there in the flat. Covers that 17 yards for a first down. 
Under two minutes to go in the third quarter now. Carthage, the two touchdown lead. They're in the 4A Division I state championship game. of a yard. Ray Sean Roberts and Detravion Thompson, the pirate defensive ends, make a sandwich. Good pressure coming off the ball. And Thompson not allowing any cutback to Mason Courtney. One of the few times in this game that we've seen this Pirates defense be able to just get in and put pressure, knock the offensive lineman back and tackle the running back for a negative play. Good hustle there by Detravian Thompson. That's the constant at La Vega. A punishing defense year in, year out. Second down, Courtney with a crease. Inside the 15. La Vega trying to rip the ball out at the end. 15 yards on the carry. Roberts made the tackle. Oh, of a slashing run by Courtney Mason, a little bit of a pause, and he takes just an, an angle. Starts on the right side of the line of scrimmage, and he cuts it all the way back across the field. You see here, he lost his mouth guard. That's what he was pointing to when he got up. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. Yes, four fingers in the air. Away we go to the fourth here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Scott Surratt and Carthage after their third state championship in four years. They lead the defending champion, La Vega, 35-21. chapter in this epic begins now. An epic way to end the season in Class 4A Division 1. Carthage and La Vega combining for the last four titles in 4A Division 1. Each school winning a pair. And after three quarters, Carthage with the 35-21 lead. That man, Calvante Dixon, has caught three touchdown passes. And he's looking for a little more here to start the fourth as Carthage has it inside the La Vega 15. Ted Emmerich, Shea Walker, Jason Spells, Katie Engelson, our entire crew, delighted you could be with us here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington for day three of the UIL Football State Championships. Dixon goes in motion. And Courtney is taken down in the backfield. Aviante Montgomery. Drops him for a loss of a couple. And a man is down. That's Keon Reese for La Vega. Reese, a senior, who started the year at safety, has played a lot more linebacker the last two weeks after teammate DeMarquise Hayes, the Kansas State signee, was injured. Well, it's a very difficult assignment to move you from a safety down into the mix of the front seven on the defense. And there's just a lot of more bodies flying around. Guys getting to the second level offensively to block. Great to see Reese jogging off the field. Yeah, under his own power. Off it goes to the La Vega sideline. Well, positive thing for this Pirates defense, and it's not a big surprise, but creating another negative play. I will say I'm a fan of the glasses, too. 
Keon Reese. Yeah. Okay. Inspiration for someone like me. <laughs> Good to see him doing well. Yeah, Hope to see him back in the game yeah. very soon. Second and 12 for Carthage at the Pirate 15. Out of the eye this time. Brandon McNeely, the fullback in front of Mason Courtney. Courtney following his blocks. Down close to the five. Anthony Burns, the tackle, eight yards. It'll be third and short. It was a sea of red jerseys. Tykees Crawford and Kay Johnson on the left side of that offensive line. They just got an enormous push. Leverage there, and Mason Courtney staying right behind him. Take another look. Ted is just pushing bodies down and up following that red three or four jerseys. Again, an offensive line that averages 308 pounds. Well, Kellum and Williams on that right side are they go 333 and 340. Yep, and Tykees Crawford. The standout out. left tackle. Carthage, their first time out of the half. Crawford, who has offers from LSU, Alabama, and many others, goes 336. Well, fans, you can join the UIL Football Championship conversation on social media. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and use the hashtag UIL on Fox. And reach out to Shay, too, on Twitter. He loves hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can find him. Well, if, I could, that if, if I could find me, that would yeah. be good. I mean, that, that's a place to start. You don't tweet that often, but neither do I. Really. I like the retweet. Like if I see something that I yeah. like, you just yeah. yeah I like the retweet. Just pass it along. Yeah. Hey, check this out. I'm not gonna create a tweet. Well, this game deserves all the tweets with the legacies that Carthage and La Vega have built over the last several years. Early in the fourth quarter, Carthage and Coach Scott Surratt trying to build on the two-touchdown lead. It's third and four from the seven. You look how deep Mason Courtney is lined up in that power eye. Six, seven, eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. Couple of tight ends. And the eye set. Rayvon Ingram, starting middle linebacker, is in at fullback now. The fade, Dixon. It's not there, but a flag. They got Landry Kenny on the coverage. I like the tall body. The mirroring Kavante Dixon. Holding on the offense, number one, gets an ineligible pass receiver. Penalty is at the distance to the goal. It's an automatic first down. Well, it's on the defense, but yes, we get the point. And first down, Carthage. How about that? The quarterback, Landry Kinney, trying to contain Dixon. Yeah, and I think the coverage wasn't all that bad. I mean, it definitely draws the flag. Got his hands out and his arms extended to keep the momentum of Dixon. Just stunned a bit, but got another opportunity. Kenny lined up across Dixon again. First and goal. Courtney. Falling forward. He is down just shy of the goal line. And T. Kellum getting up from the bottom. And he's had a monster game. Right guard. 5'9", 333-pound junior. How about the La Vega defense, though? Stopping Courtney. Yeah, but they're, they're out, man. The... the, the Weight and the momentum is all on the offensive side. They know when the ball is going to be snapped. And they're pushing forward. That La Vega defense, a little out man, but certainly not in the heart. Second and goal from the one. Courtney again. He rams it in. Touchdown, Bulldogs. It's a Carthage clinic. Power run game, offensive line. 
doing a great job squeezing down creating space Mason Courtney probably, well, he's definitely over 1500 yards came into the game with 1435 and seven touchdowns and he's added to both of those totals this game how about 173 and three touchdowns on 23 carries now for Mason Courtney and he's up to 1600 on the season overall the dogs have scored touchdowns on their last six possessions our Texas Farm Bureau insurance game summary how about this Carthage offense how they have come alive well we talked about it at the open that, that the big three and they have certainly delivered Calvante Dixon just he's a special talent and a wide receiver Mason Courtney but I'm, I'm going back Ted to the offensive line I mean really they, they just they protected Kai Horton they've created the running lanes for Mason Courtney and Jaden Thomas dominating performance skill position guys are doing great offensive line doing a fantastic job of creating these opportunities the big boys up front and there's a good shot of them yeah, it's a lot of mass sitting on that bench oh, a little pop-up kick close to midfield and Carthage has recovered Cartrell Fulton comes up with it for the Bulldogs oh it's all going Carthage's way uh, for coach Hyde this is when it rains it pours off the hands of Keyshawn Taylor and coach Hyde is saying that he wants to know if his guy had enough room to catch the ball but the Bulldogs you know that offensive line they just thought they were going to catch a little bit of a break back on the field that was a shorter kick than usual from Johnny Madrano Taylor could not field it cleanly and Fulton recovered it for Carthage and this dog's offense that has scored six touchdowns on their last six drives go back to work. Courtney. Four-yard pickup here. Roberts on the stop. Now coming in, this game had as much hype as any this week. And that includes what we'll see tomorrow, the rematch, of course, in class 6a between duncanville and north shore game that ended on the hail mary a year ago it's because these teams have combined to win the last four state championships in 4a division one they have not played in a title game before today but carthage is pulling away courtney the cutback inside the 45 for two Thompson is there defensively for La Vega. Yeah, you love the pursuit by this La Vega defense. You know they're gassed. You know they're tired. They're playing on fumes. Still pursuing, running, tracking. Making sure Mason Courtney is not able to cut that up and make a bigger game. Forcing a third down. Carthage coach Scott Surratt was asked, hey, did you want this matchup? for the title just like everyone else in the state wanted to see these two hook it up he said I, I don't know if we really wanted it I don't know if you can say that but we thought La Vega would be there in the end we just hoped we would be there they are and they're delivering third and four Horton keeps it after faking the toss they caught a high snap yeah and kind of threw him off as he was looking to maybe run to his right but that path was denied by the Pirates defense and he had to cut it back up in the middle of the field where he maybe picked up maybe a yard So fourth and three upcoming You asked Surratt, okay, what what's the key to success in championship games? You're six and oh and you're eight minutes away now from being seven and oh in state championship games He can't explain it. Yeah, that's where he's talked about focusing on the next yep. year. It's The program that he has helped build Fourth and three here comes the quick kick from Kai Horton. Nobody back deep for La Vega. This is a beauty. Right near the five. Horton doing the job on special teams as well. 38-yard punt 
The defending champion, La Vega Pirates, trail by three touchdowns here in the fourth. Saturday on Fox Sports Southwest. High school teams from across the state rally inside AT&T Stadium. All battling to be the best in Texas. Don't miss Saturday's matchups during the UIL Football State Championship on Fox Sports Southwest. High school sports under the spotlight. Sunday on Fox Sports Southwest. The UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest are brought to you by... Your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By Jack in the Box, proud sponsor of the Texas UIL Championships. By Polaris Ranger, driven to do more. By Baylor Scott and White Health, changing health care for the better. By Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud official sponsor of the UIL. And by Main Event. The most fun you can have under one roof. Main Event Entertainment. Together we play. Calvante Dixon with three touchdown receptions for the Carthage Bulldogs. And they lead by three scores. 7.38 to play here in the fourth quarter in Arlington. 42-21 and La Vega takes over at its own five-yard line. The running game has been there, but they have not had the balance that had, they had hoped for. And certainly when you give up 42 points, it's just hard to recover from that. Here's Walton on the perimeter. A gain of about four yards. And he had some Carthage defenders that had a shot. And Walton on the goal line or even behind the goal line, his raw speed took him out wide and he was able to pick up a positive gain on first down. Now we take a look at the recent winners in Class 4A Division 1. That's right. These two teams have won the last four. La Vega a year ago and in 2015, Carthage back-to-back -back in 2016 and 17. Second and six. Kenny is blasted as he lets it go. Jai Brazier coming in to knock him down. Well, and Brazier looks like he's down. He's a defender for Carthage around the goal line. That's, uh, that's Quentin Owens. Yeah, Owens remains down in the end zone. But Kenny got rocked. He was trying to go downfield to Malachi Wright, who had man-to-man -man coverage. But before Kenny could step into the pass and make the throw, Brazier just leveled it. Let's actually check that. Juan, Juan Brown. Yeah, 90, yes. not 80. Yep. But good to see him back on his feet. Uh, La Vega... Their only loss this season was to Argyle, September 6th. 13 consecutive wins since then. And by the way, they avenged that loss in the state quarterfinals by blowing out Argyle, 44-20. Well, they got a lot of new starters, especially on defense. Don Hyde said, we just knew we would struggle the first few weeks. A lot of guys had never played a varsity snap. And yet they made the return trip to Arlington. Third and six. Elisha Cummings cannot step out of the tackle. Cole Whitlock flying in. It's a loss of four, what and a, it's fourth down. What a second half Whitlock has had. We're talking about scraping off the edges of the defense to take that angled run away from this Pirates offense, getting penetration and making a sure tackle. Please set the play clock at 40. Doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be right. Cole Whitlock having a heck of a half here in shutting down that La Vega Pirate running game. Cummings had the two touchdowns in the first half for La Vega. He has 135 yards on 14 carries. But boxed in for the most part here in the second half outside of one big run. Fourth and 10, Jordan Rogers from his own end zone. New is not back there for Carthage. And this is dead at the 45 of La Vega, 40-yard punt. Well, 
Let's send you back to the state championship game in 4A Division I a couple of years ago. Carthage and Kennedale. Keontae Ingram, now a star for the Texas Longhorns, starring for the Carthage Bulldogs in his final game in high school. 163 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. And Carthage won its sixth title in the previous 10 years at that point, 49-21. First down, Courtney bouncing off his own man and a couple of the Vega defenders. Picks up about four. Vernon Walker on the tackle, like Scott Surratt told Katie Engelson before the game. It, it's hard to believe that it was two years ago. That's yeah. the last time that Carthage was here. They're, they're used to being in the state championship game every year. Well, with state titles in 08, 9 and 10, and 13, 16 and 17. Almost feels like they're supposed to be here every year, but they certainly earn their way here every year. They lost to Liberty Hill in the state semifinals a year ago. Otherwise, they would have played La Vega for the title last year as well. Second and five, Courtney again, pulling forward, breaking a tackle. Here he goes, inside the 10. David Rawls saves the touchdown. Making that tackle, though, he's a little slow getting up. 32 yards for Mason Courtney, who has now eclipsed 200 on the day. The thing about it is you see that he's six or seven yards downfield before he gets contact, but he runs right through those arm tackles. Dynamic running back. 1,400 yards on the season coming into this game. And now over 1,600 with today's performance. He was the number two running back last year for Carthage as a sophomore. Had about 930 yards, 12 touchdowns. Tucker Smith was the lead ball carrier. But Courtney is the man this year as a junior. First and goal. McNeely in motion. Toss it. Courtney inside the five that ball might have come out yeah. and La They're Vega has Vega recovered cuts. Jordan Rogers comes up with it for La Vega Courtney losing a fumble for the second time today and this Jordan Rogers pulling it back out of the arms I think he was the cause of that first fumble and for all the things that Mason Courtney has done well in this game and helped his team this season, he's done a great job of protecting the football, but he has lost two fumbles today. Now, starting field position for the Pirates. Not very good from their own five-yard line, but defensively, you got to love the hustle. You have to love the hustle for the Pirates, the no-quit in that defense. La Vega defensively knows no other way. Exactly. <laughs> With Don Hyde as the head coach, their longtime defensive coordinator before he was promoted last year. Kinney from the end zone. Kinney stumbling. He goes down. Lost a yard. Jakevion Tool and Ray Von Ingram with the sack. Well, he had three guys in the passing game downfield, but they were all covered. Kenny trying to find some place to go. Jacavian Tool closing it out. And a little help there from Rayvon Ingram as well. And Schaefer Tool, that's going to be his first sack of the year, believe it or not. Kenny scrambling again. Positive yardage. Out to about the 12. Gain of eight. It'll be third and short with 4.13 remaining. Now, La Vega, after the state championship a year ago, Don Hyde said that this year was much, much harder. We knew that we were going to get the best effort from every team on our schedule. He likes to say that they snuck up on some people last year. I don't know how much stock you want to put into that. They were 14 and 2. Everyone knew how good yeah. La Vega has been and certainly was all last year. 
but as the defending state champion, it's a different mentality. Walden on the carry, and close to the first down marker, he should have it. Guess who on the tackle? Yeah, Cole Whitlock. Cole Whitlock. But he's coming up from that safety position, and the front seven is doing exactly what they need to do against this La Vega run game, and, and Cole Whitlock is there to clean up those plays and make those tackles, and he has done an outstanding job of that, certainly in the second half. It seems like we've been calling his name every time that the Bulldogs were on defense, making big plays. On first down, speed option, keeper by Kinney. Breaks a tackle and a stiff arm across the 30. Cole Whitlock rides him out. Gain of 15 for the quarterback. So building on positives here, you, you started this possession on, on your own five-yard line. Now you're out to the 30. You've got a couple of good plays, and this Carthage defense not letting up at all. Now from the 30. Kenny with a lot of time. Here's Walton. And drives ahead to around the 43-yard line. That's another first down. And a flag is down at the end of the play. 13 yards on the completion. But let's sort this out. Rayvon Ingram, I think, a little extracurricular after the whistle. A lot of bodies around there. Good to see Quan Brown back on the field. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense, number 90. 15 yards added to the end of the play. It's an automatic first down. That's number 90's first unsportsmanlike for the game. That's on Quan Brown. Hmm. Yeah, just that push. The play's over. Yep. Whistle was blown. And, and the, let's just say it, the game is in hand at this point. Yes. No need for that. Set the clock. Sometimes when sometimes when linemen run a long way, they're gonna they're gonna hit somebody. Yeah. I mean they just I came here for a reason. It might be their own player if they have to do it, but just to say, hey, look, I've came all this way. Right. I'm not just gonna stop. I want some action. Cummings off the pitch. Steps out of bounds. Pain of about a yard. And just so impressed with Elijah Cummings in this game. I mean, he's going against a great Bulldog defense. And the way that he has run the ball, broke tackles, kept his team in the game. And, and by the way, Cummings, a junior. Jarquay Walton, a junior. Their careers are far from over as Kenny keeps it. Down to the 36, Ingram and Whitlock made the tackle. Third and three upcoming for the Pirates. How about the last five years for La Vega? 71 and five. State championships in 2015 and last season. At least 13 victories in all five of those years. Maybe sometime in the offseason. Now let's see what Kenny does here. He's got a lot of time to throw the ball, trying to get it down to Cummings. And oh, there's a flag. flag. Yep. So sometime in the spring, before spring training for La Vega, I think, you know, we might want to take a car ride down to the high school. Yeah. Go visit with Coach okay. Don Hyde okay. and say, so which teams in the last five years did you guys sneak up on? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, That's what he said yeah. about last year. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's an automatic first down. That's on Miles Halton. Now it's getting a little sloppy in the final minutes. But it's, it's remarkable what Hyde, of course, Willie Williams, the head coach for 28 years, now the athletic director at La Vega. Hyde was his defensive coordinator, elevated before last season high 28 and 3 as the head coach at la vega the state championship last year and they'll be the state runner up this year they're only keeping it in the family for willie williams jamal williams his son as a sophomore quarterback 
led these Pirates to a state championship. Yeah, 2015. Hitting. Hitting getting loose to the end zone for the Pirates touchdown. Landry Kinney wrapping up his senior season with a score. And he got a little congratulatory pat on the back from Cole Whitlock, who was trying to push him out of bounds at the very end, but Kinney gets it in for the touchdown. I like the sportsmanship there. Fourth rushing touchdown of the season for Landry Kinney. Who it should be said, did a terrific job following the act of Aira Rawls III, who led, of course, La Vega last year to the state title as a sophomore. Rawls moved to safety. Kinney won the competition in August. Don Hyde said that was such a tough decision. But Kenny proved him right, and so did Rawls defensively as the quarterback of the defense. La Vega now within two scores with 2.07 to play. So clearly a quarterback design run. Great block there by Elijah Cummings, and you see Whitlock chasing him down, <laughs> trying to get there. Whitlock's had a tremendous second half for the Carthage Bulldog defense, making tackles in the open field. How about that drive, 95 yards. Eight plays, 253 off the clock. Landry Kinney moving mid-season last year to join La Vega, transferred from Denton High. His father, Gary Joe, former All-Southwest Conference linebacker at Baylor, on the staff at La Vega. Now the starting quarterback for his senior season. But Carthage still in control. Chavez, the onside kick. And it's Calvante Dixon who and, recovers it. And, and you know what? He caught it in his hands as it was going away from him. He didn't get the body in front of it right. at all. I think he's got a little bit of confidence in his catching ability. Not a body catcher. Well, Calvante Dixon has had a big game. Kai Horton has had a big game. But our jack-in-the-box player of the game is running back Mason Courtney. No, what a fantastic job he did all game. His, his reads, his speed, power. You guys just had a phenomenal game today. Great blocking by the offensive line, but he knows where to go and where his bread is buttered. Getting behind those big guys, getting out in space. And Courtney's not done. And I got another carry here. I'm gonna pick up six or seven yards. <laughs> On first down. Up to 219 yards on 28 carries. Go with those three touchdowns. I'll beg your pardon, 225. Got it with that last carry on 29 attempts. Don't want to shortchange Mason Courtney. I don't want him to hear about that. <laughs> well, not as he was already the, uh, yeah. the check in the box player That's of right. the game. That's right. Get it right, Emmerich. Yeah. The play happened so fast, so I didn't yeah. really know that he got the extra yards either. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself. I do know this. More than 1,600 on the season. Yes, the 16-game season. As Courtney has the first down, tackled by Anthony Burns. Well, it's got Surratt nose. Now, obviously, he can yeah. celebrate. Take off the headset, Scott. The hugs and the handshakes abound final minute here in Arlington Carthage opened with a Mason Courtney lost fumble in La Vega territory and they had to punt on their second possession after that six consecutive drives ending in the end zone Tykees Crawford kneeling down on the star, not in a celebratory mode necessarily, just very reflective about what this team has accomplished. The Carthage.
Texas Bulldogs have climbed the stairway to seven. Scott Surratt has led Carthage to its seventh state championship and their third in four years. They beat La Vega, the defending champion, 42-28. Let's send it down to Katie Engelson. Coach Surratt, you are now seven for seven in state title games. What does this win mean to you? Oh, it means the world. You know, you know that's for Coach Mack. You know, the offense coordinator. He coached me in high school. It's really hired him. He made such a difference in my life. But, uh, that's for him. But, you know, it means the world to, to, to me, Carthage, uh, you know. We just have the, we have the, we have the, we have the best administration, wives, everything. It takes a team of people to do what we've done over the years, and uh, you don't do it with a bad team. And I'm not just talking about players. I'm talking about the whole administration and everything. You mentioned Coach Mack. This team faced a lot of adversity this season. What can be said about their ability to persevere? Well, it's unbelievable how we persevered and just kept going. I mean, it was a tough battle, and it had to tell. Tell the players that one of, the, one of our beloved ones and one of their favorite coaches ever have been here with me all 13 years that had passed, and uh, it was a tough, tough moment. But uh, he, he's looking right now. He, he's over us right now. In my pregame speech, I kind of said he's, he's up above in heaven, so let's go get seven. How will you remember this state title game and this team? Well, we've been a great team, number one. And, uh, you know, 32 seniors, I mean, uh, we had a great team. Uh, 16, anytime you go 16-0 and, and beat a team like that, you have a great team, and it's true to my coaches. I have the best coaches in the state, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's just crazy. Coach, congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you so much. Let's now send it over to Jason Spells, who's with Mason Courtney. Thank you, Katie. 200-plus rushing yards, three touchdowns. More importantly, this newspaper headline says it all. Seventh title is heading to Carthage. What's going through your mind right now? Uh, this is an unbelievable feeling. It's probably the happiest day of my life. We've been working for this. 16 weeks ago, like, it's unbelievable. What was it like on the field today? You had a couple of big runs, obviously the three rushing scores. What kind of zone were you and the rest of the offense in? Well, I had that fumble at the beginning, but I knew I had to shake that off, and I knew my team had my back, and we just had a, we had a, we knew we had to pound the rock, and that's what we did. And we just got all the way down. We made touchdowns, we made plays, and we came out on top. Obviously, you and Kai both juniors, but you're losing Calvante. What has he meant to this program and to you? Calvante? Unbelievable leader. He's probably one of the best guys you'll ever meet. He like, he's just a great leader. Like, you can always trust in him to make plays and he'll make them. What's the bus ride going to be like to Carthage now? Crazy. Party time. <laughs> Congra congratulations once again. Hey, take the headline. It's, you've earned it, as well as another state championship. Mason Courtney, three touchdowns on the day. We'll send it back to you all the time. Jason, thank you. I love that. Party time excellent yes, sir. for Mason Courtney you know it. and Carthage. Uh, Kelvante Dixon, three touchdowns as well, just like Courtney. Scott Surratt mentioned the 32 seniors for Carthage. That's a big class at the 4A level. 16 of those seniors start. Surratt said every one of them are leaders, and a lot of them were six and seven years old when Carthage won its first state title under Scott Surratt back in 2008. Some of them, including center Connor Davis, were ball boys on that team. And for them to live the dream out now themselves in 2019 is special. Back downstairs to Katie Engels. Kelvante, three touchdown receptions. What was it like playing in this game? It was amazing. This is actually my first time ever playing in it. Uh, usually I'll be watching, but it was, a good, it was a good experience. As a senior, what does this mean to you and the rest of the senior class? Well, that means a lot of us going out with a bang. This team faced a lot of adversity this year. What can be said about your team's ability to persevere? Ooh, what can be said about this? I really can't, I can't, really can't explain on this one. Speechless, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what does this mean when mean to you and the rest of the Carthage community? This will mean a lot of us coming in, doing what we had to do, and coming out with a win. Calvante, congratulations. Go celebrate with your teammate. Thank you.
We'll send it back to you guys. Katie, thanks. Uh, Dixon caught the game-winning touchdown pass last week in the semifinals against Lampasas with 13 seconds remaining. Uh, there would be no need for a game-winning touchdown reception here today, but he did have a last-second touchdown in the first half. Three all told. Uh, again, another perfect throw, but a great job of route running, and that's the touchdown right there, right before the end of the half, set up by a Kale Williams catch on fourth down and seven. However, Fonte Dixon just absolutely dominant, can't cover that guy one-on-one. -on -one. He ran past the defenders, he got perfect throws from his quarterback. Big day for both of those guys, and the Carthage Bulldogs are celebrating a state championship. Meanwhile, for La Vega and Don Hyde, it was gold medals and giant state championship rings last year. It will be silver medals this year, but certainly no reason to hang your head. La Vega returning to the state final just ran into the buzzsaw known as Carthage this year. Well, again, the Pirates, there was no give up. You talk about Elijah Cummings. Jarquay Walton, Landry Kenny, I mean, just the players that they had, and they played their hearts out. They just played a better team today. And and Coach Hyde would tell you, a couple of mistakes along the way. So you get too many guys back, you have a 55-yard punt that gets negated, putting the Bulldogs down on the five-yard on their own five-yard line. Instead, they get the ball from scrimmage around the 35 or 40. Just those types of things are very difficult to overcome in this game. Yeah, every mistake like that, which may be little, you know, week nine of the regular season, is magnified here in December at AT&T Stadium. Whoa, Whitlock. Cole Defense. Whitlock deserves this award, right? Defensive MVP today. Absolutely. What a great, I'm going to say second half. First yeah. half, yeah. Eh, pedestrian. Second half, outstanding. Coming down in run support and making sure that the La Vega Pirate running backs were not making those cuts and those moves like they did in the first half. Outstanding job. Good defensive adjustment by defensive coordinator Darren Preston, but Cole Whitlock executed it beautifully. It's a much tougher decision to name the offensive MVP for Carthage today. Kai Horton, Mason Courtney. How about Calvante Dixon? The three touchdown receptions. He'll be playing major college football next season. Don't know exactly where just yet, but you'll see him on Saturdays soon enough. Well, Carthage becomes the 10th program to win seven state championships in the UIL. Richland Springs, Katy, South Lake Carroll, Salina, Alita, Abilene, Plano, Brownwood, Mart, and now the Carthage Bulldogs as they beat last year's champion La Vega 42-28. And all seven of these titles for Carthage Shea have come in the last 12 years. The dynasty just marches yes. on. Well, dynasties are usually created over like longer periods of time. But this 12 year run, I don't know that there's been a better one in the state of Texas in high school football. Their seventh state title overall, and their third in the last four years. The Carthage Bulldogs reign again in Class 4A Division I. What impressed you the most about Carthage today, Shay? Well, I, I just I go back to this offensive line. They just did such a fantastic job in the skill position. Players for Carthage so polished, knowing exactly what they want to do. Kai Horton. Offensively, it was just a dominating performance by the Bulldogs, and they, and that, they deserve to win this game. But you, know, you think about being impressed. It's like all of the weapons that they have available to it. High heart distributed all around. Offensive line blocked great. And just really, once they got into the move or the mode, they just continued on cruise control, ran right through this La Vega team. 42-28.
Carthage caps the perfect season for Shea, Jason, and Katie. This is Ted saying so long for now for Championship Live is next. The Carthage Bulldogs have been 4A's biggest dynasty. In a tight game with the defending champion La Vega Pirates, Carthage scores six straight possessions. Kelvante Dixon and Mason Courtney were beast in this one. And Scott Surratt, a whopping 7-0 in state title games, brings Carthage its third title in four years. We welcome you in to Ford Championship Live. It's your in-between entertainment show. We will continue to celebrate Carthage's latest state championship win and get you ready again for our middle game with Wimberley and Pleasant Grove. Well, Rick Renner alongside the coach, everybody's favorite coach, Ken Purcell. And by the way, Scott Surratt's already halfway, more than halfway towards toward your 12 rings. And of course, the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, the great Greg Tepper. Guys, I'm looking at this and it's starting to look like the dynasty of all dynasties in East Texas with the Big Red. Well, they're amazing. They have great coaching, but they have great kids, great athletes. You know, we were talking about the play calling, and Temp and I were talking about it. When you're running back and your receiver, there's a debate on which should be the MVP. As a coach, you say, whoa, that's great offense because we're running the ball and we're throwing the ball. So what could be better than a debate between your wide receiver and your tailback as to who's the best? Yeah, the, we're going to talk a lot about Carthage with seven state championships, and obviously that's really impressive. Let's talk, talk about how all seven have come under Coach Scott Surratt. He has seven state championships. Here is a complete list of the coaches with more than seven state championships. Ready? G.A. Moore, Gordon Wood. That's the list. It's time to start considering Scott Surratt as one of the greatest coaches in Texas high school football history. We are at that point. It is undeniable what he has done with Carthage. He has turned them into the powerhouse of this de of this millennium. And to do that, you know, in nowadays football, which is very difficult to do with so many great teams and so many great coaches across the Lone Star State. Time now for the Texas Farm Bureau Insurance game summary of this one. Let's take a look at the highlights leading up to it. It was the dream matchup, defending champion La Vega against Carthage. La Vega looking to go back-to-back. -back. Carthage has won six state championships since 2008. And Elijah Cummings will get through the hole and get in for a 19-yard touchdown. The Pirates are up 7-0 after one. We go on to the second quarter, and Mason Courtney, the fabulous running back for Carthage, he'll go up the gut from five yards out. The game is tied at seven. Bouncing back after that early fumble. Then, the Pirates' next possession, Jarquay Walton. He'll get loose 50 yards here. Unbelievable balance by these running backs from La Vega. They were able to slip tackles and turn three or four yard gains into 30 and 40. And then later, Cummings would escape a tackle, cut back, he breaks another tackle and scores his second touchdown of the game at that time. Cummings rushed for 136. La Vegas leading it 114-7. One thing I think Coach Surratt talked about at halftime is tackle. Tackle. Wrap him up. Hard to tackle this guy. Kelvante Dixon. Beautiful pass from Kai Horton. A 22-yard grab. We're tied at 14 all. Under 10 seconds to go in the half. And this was huge. Horton connects with Dixon here. Horton 16 of 22. 231 yards and three touchdowns. Kelvante Dixon is a superstar. If you didn't know that before the game, you know it now, and he is getting Big Red fired up. They stop La Vega, and then they march down and score just like that. And check out Dixon here, his third touchdown of the day. It's a 63-yard strike. Dixon had seven grabs, 120 yards, and suddenly a 14-point lead. Then the Bulldogs go for it on fourth and one, and look at Courtney. He gets free and goes the distance, coach. Adjustments, halftime adjustments. I've always said it. Look at the first two series after the half. You get a stop and you score. 30 carries, 229 yards. He'll punch it in again. Here, his third touchdown of the game. He was an absolute beast. Carthage wins 42 28. It's their seventh state title in school history, all coming since 2008. Scott Surratt, one of the most prolific coaches in Texas all time, 7 0 in state title games, seven since 2008. A very impressive performance by these Carthage Bulldogs. And, and it was the dream matchup. We wanted it last year. Liberty Hill got in the way. But I, I don't think we've seen anybody do this to La Vega 
no. you know, since Don Hines been running things, it's kind of a surprise. Well, I'll tell you that we talk a lot about Mason Courtney, and we talk about Kai Horton, who played a fantastic game, by the way, once he settled into the game, and obviously Calvante Dixon. None of those guys are the MVP for me. The MVP of this game is the Carthage offensive line. Those big boys up front eight against a very, very good Waco La Vega defensive line. And in the end, you know, we thought that they were able to maybe able to hit it through the air, but the fact that they were able to run the ball, Coach, we were talking about that offensive balance. The fact that they were able to run the ball is what made the difference in this game and what made them basically impossible to stop. Well, and, and one thing on the stat sheet that some people don't realize, Carthage had the ball 10 minutes longer than La Vega. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. That offensive line and that offense holding the ball, grinding it out, 10 extra minutes in the ball game. That's a huge stat that a lot of people overlook. There's nothing more debilitating than being able to, you know, run against somebody and just take their heart out of the, the offensive line. Did such a great yep. job for Carthage. Let's take a look now at our main event player comparison. And we look at the two big studs for Carthage. Mason Courtney, what an afternoon. He did have two fumbles, but he was able to recover from that early one. The, the one later was not that uh, big of a meaning. But Calvante Dixon, he gets the offensive MVP. He is special. He's always open above his head you can put three guys on a test. Calvante Dixon is a game breaker and we knew coming into this game that he had a chance to be to make him some special plays and they just found a way to get him the ball. I think they wanted to engage him early. They've thrown him kind of short passes, just get the ball in his hand, make La Vega remember, oh yeah, by the way, we've got number three and then they started going deep and this, the way he tracks the ball out of the quarterback's hand is truly remarkable. This is a tremendous read to come back to the ball and then break into the touchdown for the touchdown and remember, that was right before the half coach that now in hindsight it's easy to say that feels like the biggest score of the game right before half to go in at 21 14. well a telling point also is people say well let's bracket him they did bracket him. <laughs> they did double team and he still came up with the touch if you watch the touchdowns on replay there are two people on him one in between and one in front and one behind that's great quarterback throwing as well on the, on getting the ball in there so you can talk about bracketing great athletes overcome it. Mason Courtney able to run for 229 yards and three touchdowns in this one. Had the early fumble coach, and you could tell he was really mad at himself. And after that, he was part of a, that big run of scoring on six consecutive possessions. Well, we talk about great athletes. We talk about quarterbacks, but it's all players that are great athletes. You have a short memory. You don't take that fumble and let it leave it on your back for another minute. You let it go. Look, the 229 yards on the ground is impressive, and the, and the 30 touchdowns, obviously, is impressive. 30 carries, okay? That's a workhorse running back for Mason Courtney. Scott Surratt turned to him and said, look, we're going to need you to provide us with some offensive balance. And they don't have, you know, they don't have a, a ton of depth at the running back spot. Mason Courtney needed to step up in this game, and he came through in a big way on the biggest stage. Let's hear from the sensational uh, uh, performance by the quarterback for the Carthage Bulldogs, talking about Kai Horton, who's standing by with Jason Spells. Uh, the hat says it all. Texas tested. What does it mean to bring another state championship to Carthage? Um, it's amazing. We worked hard this all, all this season to get exactly this. And my brothers came out and they showed out. My lineman gave me protection. Our running back run the ball really good, established the running, and my receivers made plays like they always do. Six straight possessions where you were able to score. What went right for you all? What kind of zone were you all able to get into? We just knew coming out here that we had to uh, stay balanced running and passing the ball. And we played good overall, and we're just glad that we came out with a win. Talk to Mason. He said that fumble early on. He was not happy about that. Yeah. What did he say to you all after that fumble, and what did you say to him to really help get him going? Um, he just came over the sideline. He said, that's on me. And all of us got together. We were like, we good. We drove the ball down there. He said, just, we'll trust you. You trust us. And we'll keep on getting you the ball. And he, he made a statement. Tell me about the connection you and Kelvanta have. Those two touchdowns there in the second quarter. It seemed to be a special, a special link up, special bond between you two. Yeah, when you got a guy like Moochie that can go out and get it wherever you put the ball, it makes it a lot easier on me. And that's what he's been doing all season is just making plays for me. And having trust like I do in him, it's just really easy on me. For the third time in four seasons, the Carthage Bulldogs are state champions. Kai Horton helping to rewrite the record books. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, gentlemen. What a job he's done, and it was big shoes to fill. Gunnar Caps, who was 30-1 and one as a starter, and look at him. He's able to earn his first state championship ring. And, and we had huge questions coming into the year about Carthage replacing the quarterback spot because Gunnar Caps was such a steady hand on the wheel there. But Kai Horton, early on, we started to realize, okay, the Bulldogs have something under center. And, yeah, I don't think the numbers are going to, to wow you. He's not going to be the kind of guy that goes out there and breaks state records for single-season passing yards because that's not what Scott Surratt asks him to do. But what he does, he manages this offense exceptionally well. And, Coach, he made some impressive throws today. Yes, it helps having guys like there, like Kel Williams and Kel Vontae Dixon out there, but he dropped some dimes in this game. It was really impressive to watch. No, he really did. And you love a quarterback that leads and at the same time is humble. You know, he talks about his receivers. And if you listen close to some of these things, one of the things I just heard him say, Mason Courtney, after the fumble, he came off the field and he said, that one's on me. As coaches, you look at things like that. That's called accountability. Those are things that are lacking in our world today. A lot of people won't say, that one's on me. But then he shook it off, and his partner and his quarterback said, okay, we're together on this. But that's how you build great teams. All players take accountability for their flaws or their mistakes, but then we set them aside and we go straight forward. Coach taking another shot at the Millennials. He does it almost every <laughs> single show. Time now for the Baylor Scott White Health game diagnosis. We got to give it to Scott Surratt. A perfect 7-0 in state championship games. And coming into this one, Tep, he talked about how facing a Don High defense, this would be the toughest challenge in his coaching career and anything he's seen in 30 years. Well, he was up to the task. Yeah, he was. And this was an unbelievable coaching matchup. Obviously, Scott Surratt needs no introduction. Don Hyde on the other side, let's remember, came into this game 11-0 and in playoff games. I mean, this was an unbelievable coaching matchup for a Division I. And Scott Surratt put on a master class today, especially in the second half. The play calling was exceptional. They kept the La Vega defense, which has been so good all year, Coach, on their heels. And that's what good coaches do, is they see what's on the field, and then they say, let's make these small adjustments, these small tweaks, and let's attack where we think we can make hay. And and they had La Vega running all over the place. Well, the, the key word you used was attack, because that's what La Vega's defense does. They attack. What Scott Surratt did was take an offense and attack mm -hmm. back. And not many people do that against La Vega. La Vega all year has controlled the line of scrimmage. They're aggressive, they're tough. And they were today, but they met another team that was just as aggressive and tough-minded. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Let's take a time out on Ford Championship Live. When we come back, we'll continue to celebrate Carthage's latest state championship and get you ready for Wimberley and Pleasant Grove. A lot of fans walking in. But up next, why locker room speeches are vital, or are they, after this? The UIL Football State Championships on Fox Sports Southwest are brought to you by your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By Jack in the Box, proud sponsor of the Texas UIL Championships. By Baylor Scott and White Health, changing health care for the better. By Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud official sponsor of the UIL. And by Main Event, the most fun you can have under one roof. Main Event Entertainment, together we play.